The Mystery of Azo Basu In the year 1931 near Marrakesh, Morocco, an individual with striking similarities to a Neanderthal was discovered. Resembling our ancient ancestors, this individual possessed a sloping forehead, a prominent lower jaw and robust brow ridges. Living in a cave, he relied on sticks and stones to gather plants and hunt animals, leading a primitive lifestyle. Referred to as Adzo Basu, his discovery garnered global attention. Before being photographed, he had to be clothed as it was reported that he did not wear any on a day-to-day -day basis. However, once the filming was over, he eagerly discarded the unnecessary items. Azo Basu, a mysterious individual, resided in the Dades Valley. He made his home in a cave and sustained himself solely on a diet of plants and raw food, lacking the knowledge of harnessing fire. Those who interacted with him reported that his communication skills were quite limited, often resorting to expressing himself through various emotional sounds. Along with his roughly defined facial features, his arms were exceptionally long, reaching his knees, and he possessed flat feet. In the 20th century, scientists conceptualized Neanderthals in this manner, leading to Azo Basu being regarded as one of our ancient ancestors. Following numerous newspaper articles, the individual gained significant fame, attracting numerous tourists who specifically travelled to Morocco to witness the recently unearthed prehistoric figure. In 1956, Jean Boulet, a writer, and Marcel Gomet, an ethnologist, embarked on a journey to examine the physical characteristics of the discovered individual and draw comparisons to Neanderthal remains. Much to their astonishment, they discovered numerous resemblances between Azo Basu and the ancient population. This revelation prompted journalists to enthusiastically produce renewed coverage about the individual in newspapers. Azo Basu would go on to make several appearances in the press. Scientists were unable to fully study the man as he passed away during the research process. According to various news outlets, Azo Basu passed away when he was 60 years old. However, Due to the lack of information surrounding his birthplace and date, it is difficult to ascertain his exact age. In an effort to uncover more about this ancient man, scientists conducted a search in Morocco and eventually discovered two girls named Hisa and Herkaya, who also exhibited peculiar cranial features similar to Azo Basu. This discovery raises the question of whether Neanderthals truly inhabited Morocco. It is highly unlikely that Neanderthals persisted undiscovered in Morocco for thousands of years, considering the fact that the last known Neanderthals disappeared approximately 40,000 years ago. The demise of Neanderthals is attributed to conflicts with other ancient human populations or succumbing to cold-related diseases. In the event that Neanderthals did manage to survive alongside modern humans, they would have inevitably encountered them over time. He, sir, and Herkaya, who were born to modern parents, turned out to have a condition known as microcephaly, characterized by underdeveloped brains and unusually small heads. This condition can be acquired through factors such as radiation exposure, infections, or genetic disorders. Unfortunately, there is currently no known cure for microcephaly, and medical professionals can only alleviate the symptoms of the condition. The Mystery of Conrad Haas it is theorized by certain scholars that Earth may have harbored an advanced civilization in the past. However, due to unknown factors, this civilization was ultimately obliterated. This hypothesis is supported by archaeological discoveries that defy explanation when viewed through the lens of contemporary scientific understanding. Another conjecture proposes that advanced beings may have visited our planet in ancient times, imparting knowledge and advanced technologies to humanity. Consequently, it is possible that these technologies, initially deemed extraordinary, eventually endangered mankind's existence. There is a belief among certain individuals that our predecessors possessed highly advanced technologies that are beyond our comprehension today. Interestingly, it is speculated that some of our modern technologies may have been inspired or influenced by ancient civilizations, despite this knowledge being largely unknown. Concepts such as the existence of ancient flying vehicles are occasionally mentioned in ancient texts. There are claims that our ancestors not only had the ability to traverse outer space, 
but also possessed a remarkable understanding of the universe that surpasses our current knowledge. In 1963, Romanian engineer Doru Todoricu conducted an examination of a 450-page manuscript housed in Sibiu's National Archive, formerly known as Hermannstadt. Todoricu focused on the scientific and technological aspects of the manuscript and categorized it as a comprehensive exploration of artillery and ballistics challenges despite its previous recognition. It was during this examination that Todoricu discovered the remarkable concepts on rocketry documented by Conrad Haas in the third section of the manuscript. The Sibiu manuscript has garnered significant attention due to its divergence from the existing historical narrative. Limited information is available about Conrad Haas's personal life, but it is known that he was born in Dornbach, near Vienna. Haas served as an artillery guard and commissioned officer at the Imperial Court of Vienna. It is believed that he journeyed to Transylvania alongside the Imperial forces in 1551, assuming the role of chief at the Hermannstadt Arsenal's artillery camp. During the years 1529 to 1569, the author wrote the manuscript, which seems to include, among various topics, the earliest elucidation of the fundamental operational principle of the multi-stage rocket. The author discusses the clustering of rockets, the use of stabilizing fins, and the utilization of liquid fuel, while also providing descriptions and illustrations of both two-stage and three-stage rockets. The Sibiu manuscript was composed in the German language and is thought to have been based on even older texts. It provides detailed explanations of the fundamental concepts of rocket science and includes illustrations of three-stage space rockets. Additionally, the manuscript discusses the integration of fireworks with weaponry and even provides instructions on constructing a hang glider. It also outlines the process of creating fuel mixtures for use as liquid rocket propellant. Additionally, there are mentions of moon flights. As per Romanian researchers, the manuscript includes narratives about an individual who successfully reached Earth's satellite by means of an extraordinary aircraft. Furthermore, there are depictions of ancient fuel composed of rare elements. These rocket models were subsequently launched at Cape Kennedy and utilized by astronauts in the Mercury, Gemini and Apollo initiatives. It appears that the chronicler had a glimpse into the world of the future. The handwritten manuscript from Sibiu is quite extensive, spanning 450 pages. The authenticity of the Sibiu manuscript is widely acknowledged by experts who refrain from providing immediate commentary on its contents. This case might be dismissed as mere science fiction, but the discovery of other peculiar texts and technologies by anticity researchers suggests otherwise. Furthermore, Archaeological findings of various artifacts provide concrete evidence that our ancestors possessed a level of civilization far more advanced than what contemporary historians conceive. Manuscripts like Sibiu have the power to revolutionize our understanding of history. It is still unclear whether Haas was able to effectively utilize his designs and transform them into functioning prototypes. However, there are individuals who argue that a rocket was propelled into the sky in Sibiu during the year 1550. It is widely believed that Conrad Haas was the pioneer behind the creation of this initial rocket. Haas himself claimed that he dedicated over 25 years to the development of an innovative air vehicle. The primary obstacle he encountered during this endeavor was the quest to identify a fuel source that would provide the necessary lift for the rocket to ascend. The main focus of the paper revolves around the fuel problem. In addition to the traditional constituents of saltpeter, sulfur, and coal, Haas also incorporated brandy to enhance the thrust generation of the rockets. As per his instructions, a small amount of crushed powder should be mixed with brandy to form a paste-like consistency. This paste should then be applied to the rocket chamber and the ignition hole. Haas also experimented with other fuels selecting the specific combination based on the intended purpose of the missile. Conrad Haas, despite his involvement in designing weapons, harbored a covert belief in fundamental human principles. This humanistic inclination is prominently evident in his expression, I recommend prioritizing peace over war, letting rifles stay untouched under shelter, preventing bullets from being fired and powder from being soaked, thus preserving the prince's wealth and the master's life.
The rocket's technical attributes closely resemble those of contemporary vehicles. Its structure consisted of wooden components that were coated with a unique layer of stone powder designed to safeguard the body from combustion caused by friction with the air. It is worth noting that during the 16th century, scientists lacked comprehensive knowledge about the complexities of atmospheric phenomena, which led some to believe that advanced beings provided them with information. Throughout his early years, he dedicated himself to exploring and studying ancient texts discovered within the present-day borders of Egypt. It was believed that a lunar expedition might have occurred in 1550, however, no concrete proof exists to substantiate these assertions. The late Lady Salah Shabazz expressed her concern about the bias and exclusions often found in textbooks. She noted that in an attempt to condense historical timelines, important facts are frequently overlooked, leaving people unaware of their significance. The city of Sibiu holds significance for those familiar with the field of rocketry and modern astronautics, as it is the birthplace of Hermann Oberth, who is recognized as one of the pioneers in these areas. Moreover, the NASA archives contain a specific document that pertains to the Sibiu manuscript, demonstrating its relevance in this field. The Mystery of the Vampire of Kroglin Grange Vampires tend to be associated with Central and Eastern Europe, but the tiny Cumbrian village of Kroglin has long boasted a homegrown vampire. This picturesque settlement, which lies between the Pennines and the River Eden, was once menaced by a beast that claimed many of the attributes of the classic vampire trope. This burning-eyed creature would stagger from a family crypt in a lonely churchyard, break into manor houses, and plunge its teeth into the necks of young women who would then have the weirdest urges to return to Kroglin. The legend of the Kroglin vampire recounts a peculiar story where villagers resort to desperate measures, opening up vaults in an attempt to eradicate the creature. The account of the Kroglin vampire gained widespread recognition through its inclusion in the autobiography of Augustus Hare, titled Story of My Life. Hare, known as a biographer, travel writer and storyteller, believed that his life's narrative warranted a significant six-volume publication, released in two installments in 1896 and 1900. Like many Victorians, Hare had an affinity for chilling ghost stories, and his books were filled with them. It was during a post-dinner conversation with Captain Fisher Rowe that Hare first heard the extraordinary tale of the Kroglin vampire. Despite impressing the gathering with his own eerie stories, Hare was taken aback when Fisher Rowe responded with an even more spine-tingling account. The author, Fisher Rowe, mentioned that his family possessed a spacious residence called Kroglin Grange, which had an intriguing legend connected to it. When the Fishers moved to Surrey, they decided to rent out the Grange. However, one of their tenants, a young woman, experienced an unforgettable ordeal. She encountered a vampire residing in a nearby churchyard, which set off a series of extraordinary events. Over time, there have been suggestions that the Kroglin vampire story has been embellished by local folklore and enthusiastic writers. Researchers have extensively examined, disproven and revalidated the legend, only to question it once more. There are allegations of plagiarism and influence from the numerous gothic horror stories and sensationalized publications that were prevalent during the vampire-crazed Victorian era. Dedicated investigators have spent significant amounts of time exploring the desolate landscapes of Cumbria, interviewing residents, scouring for traces of churches, and meticulously examining historical records and property documents. The story of the Kroglin vampire is quite elusive. However, let's begin by providing a summary of the alleged events, primarily based on Augustus Hare's account, along with some additional information from other sources and local folklore in the area. According to Hare's account, Captain Fisher informs him that although Fisher may sound a very plebeian name, his family has a long and ancient lineage. They have owned a unique and intriguing property in Cumberland, called Kroglin Grange for many centuries. This house's notable feature is its single-story structure, which has never been altered throughout its existence. However, it boasts a terrace that overlooks spacious grounds leading towards the church in the valley, offering a picturesque distant view. Hare explains that when the Fishers became too big for Kroglin Grange in terms of both family size and wealth, they made the wise decision not to alter the unique nature of the property by adding an additional floor to the house. Instead, 
they chose to relocate to Thorncroft near Guildford and leased out Croglin Grange. The Fishers had the good fortune of finding exceptional tenants, two brothers and a sister. Although Hare does not provide their names, later sources refer to them as the Cranswell family, with Edward and Michael as the brothers and Amelia as the sister. The exact time frame of their tenancy is not mentioned by Hare, but it is believed that they resided in the house sometime during the 1870s, which coincided with the Fishers' departure. The Cranswell family thoroughly enjoyed their time residing at Croglin Grange and quickly established a positive reputation in the local community. According to Hare, their less fortunate neighbours regarded them as incredibly compassionate and generous, while those of a higher social standing considered them a valuable asset to the close-knit society of the area. The Cranswells experienced a delightful winter and spring at Croglin Grange, fully enjoying the social activities in the area. Despite the Grange lacking a second floor, they found it perfectly suited to their needs. However, the summer brought an extremely hot day that rendered the brothers unable to engage in any active pursuits, forcing them to simply relax under trees and read. Amelia attempted to work on the veranda, but the intense heat made it nearly impossible to focus on her tasks. Once dinner was finished, the brothers and sisters gathered on the porch, taking pleasure in the slightly cooler evening atmosphere. They gazed at the surrounding estate, focusing on the row of trees that marked the boundary between the Grange's property and the nearby churchyard. Observing the sun setting and the moon ascending, they delighted in witnessing the complete transformation of the lawn, which was now bathed in shimmering silver light. As they took in this captivating scene, the shadows cast by the shrubbery appeared striking and defined, as if they were carefully etched into the landscape. The Cranswells retired to bed, but Amelia struggled to sleep due to the heat. Even though her windows were closed, she decided not to fasten the shutters, believing it was unnecessary in the peaceful and safe environment. Since she couldn't fall asleep, she spent the night gazing at the breathtaking beauty of the summer night. However, after a while, she observed a puzzling addition to the moonlit gardens, trees and lawn. Two radiant lights flickered near the row of trees by the churchyard. Amelia's attention was captivated by them, unable to look away. Gradually, the lights ceased their erratic movements among the tree trunks and began approaching the house across the lawn. Amelia couldn't help but fixate on these eerie lights, realising that they were part of a figure, a figure that walked awkwardly and moved towards her window. Though the being was occasionally obscured by the tree shadows, the lights remained visible drawing nearer and nearer. Amelia's heart started racing. She felt a chill running down her spine, and it became clear to her that she needed to escape. Despite the room's door being in close proximity to the window where the creature was approaching, Amelia realised that unlocking it would temporarily bring her closer to the beast. She had the urge to scream, but her throat felt immobilised, and her tongue seemed stuck to the roof of her mouth. The entity then veered off, and seemed to clumsily move away from the window where Amelia was standing. Amelia got the impression that it was circling the house and had no intention of approaching her. Overcoming the fear that had rendered her immobile, Amelia quickly jumped out of bed, hurried to the door, and struggled to insert the key into the lock. However, she then heard a disturbing sound of scratching upon the window and caught sight of a repulsive brown face with blazing eyes peering in. In a panic, she retreated to the bed, but the creature persisted in its relentless scratching. Amelia, amidst the panic in her mind, had the awareness that the window was secure, diminishing the likelihood of the creature gaining access. Although the scratching noise ceased, it was soon replaced by a pecking sound. An unsettling realisation washed over Amelia. The creature was meticulously removing the lead that held the window firmly in its frame. The persistent pecking continued, until the pain succumbed, falling into the room and breaking into scattered diamond-like fragments upon impact with the floor. Then, with an eerie elongated bony finger, the creature reached in and effortlessly turned the window handle, causing it to open. The being climbed into the room and confidently walked across Amelia's space. However, her fear was so overwhelming that she couldn't utter a scream. It approached her bed and intertwined its elongated skeletal fingers into her hair, forcefully pulling her head over the edge. And then, with great force, 
it sank its teeth into her throat. Her scream echoed through the air, prompting her brothers to hurry towards her room. Unable to open the locked door, they frantically searched for a tool to force it open, wasting precious time while the creature continued to harm their sister. Finally, using a fireplace poker, they managed to pry the door open and rushed into the room, only to witness the beast fleeing through the window. Amelia was left unconscious, her neck wounded and bleeding profusely as she lay at the edge of the bed. While one of the brothers pursued the vampire, it swiftly traversed the lawn with remarkable strides and disappeared over the wall of the churchyard. Once Amelia regained consciousness and her initial shock diminished, she expressed her astonishment and evident distress, acknowledging that the situation was highly unusual and confusing. Amelia, known for her resolute nature and lack of belief in romantic notions or superstitions, quickly formulated an explanation for the events of that night. According to her, the most plausible scenario would be that an unstable local had managed to escape from a nearby asylum and had somehow ended up in their vicinity. Amelia's injury has now healed, and it seems that she is gradually recovering from the emotional distress caused by her ordeal. Nevertheless, her doctor strongly advises that, in order to achieve a full recovery, she should seek a change of environment. Consequently, her brothers accompanied her to Switzerland, where they engaged in the typical activities enjoyed by serious Victorian travellers, like mountain climbing, collecting and preserving plants, and sketching. However, as autumn approached, Amelia increasingly expressed her desire to return to Kroglin Grange. Amelia's brothers were also missing their life at Kroglin, so they agreed to her suggestion, and the three headed back. As Kroglin Grange had only one story, it was difficult to make their living arrangements more secure. Amelia occupied her former bedroom, but always closed the shutters at night. As was typical for many old houses, though, the shutters left the top of the window pane uncovered. The brothers now shared a room opposite Amelia's and kept loaded pistols by their bedsides. The Grange provided a peaceful and enjoyable winter for the siblings. However, one spring night, Amelia was awakened by a familiar and ominous sound, a scratching at the window. Looking up, she was confronted by the same withered face she had seen the previous summer, peering down with its fiery eyes. Overwhelmed with fear, Amelia screamed, prompting her brothers to swiftly rise from their beds and rush outside, armed with pistols. The creature hastily darted across the lawn, its awkward stride betraying its injury from a bullet lodged in its leg. Although limping, it managed to evade capture by scrambling over the wall of the nearby churchyard. In the darkness, one of the brothers, in pursuit of the vampire, caught a glimpse of it disappearing into a long-abandoned crypt. The next day, the siblings informed the occupants of Kroglin Grange about the incident that occurred the previous night. They gathered a group of men to investigate the underground chamber. Upon breaking open the doors, they were met with the unsettling sight of broken coffins and remains scattered across the floor. Among the wreckage, only one coffin remained relatively intact, with its lid resting loosely on top, detached from the rest of the structure. With cautious anticipation, the siblings lifted the lid, revealing a desiccated, mummified creature bearing a striking resemblance to the one they had pursued. The vampire's leg bore a noticeable wound. The individuals who may have been the brothers were aware of the only method to silence a vampire. They removed the repulsive vampire from the underground chamber with the purpose of setting it on fire. According to local beliefs, they supposedly guided the vampire towards a holly tree in the churchyard, as holly was believed to have a beneficial effect in such a situation. It was there that it was burned, resulting in an end to the Kroglin vampire's atrocities. Even today, you can observe the remnants of the holly tree in Kroglin churchyard. The Mysterious Amamongo Nestled amidst the lush rainforests and picturesque landscapes of the Philippines, a creature of folklore and intrigue known as the Amamongo has long captured the imaginations of locals and visitors alike. Described as a humanoid monkey or ape-like creature, the Amamongo is said to roam the remote and uncharted regions of the archipelago, leaving a trail of fascination and fear in its wake. The Amamongo, also known as the Capre and Agta, is deeply entrenched in Philippine folklore and mythology. The creature's origins can be traced back to pre-colonial times, when traditions and storytelling were the primary means of passing down cultural knowledge. 
Tales of the Amamongo have been passed from generation to generation, gaining momentum and complexity over the centuries. The Amamongo is typically described as a towering, hairy, ape-like creature, often standing over seven feet tall. Its large red eyes are said to glow in the darkness, adding to its eerie and menacing appearance. The creature is believed to possess immense strength and agility, enabling it to traverse the dense forests and rugged terrains with ease. Numerous eyewitness accounts of encounters with the Amamongo have emerged from various regions of the Philippines, particularly in the provinces of Capiz, Antique, and Iloilo. Local residents and farmers have claimed to catch glimpses of the creature amid the dense foliage or while tending to their crops late at night. These sightings have sparked curiosity and fear among the communities, fueling the enduring belief in the existence of the Amamongo. The Amamongo holds a significant place in Philippine culture, as it embodies the country's rich tradition of storytelling and belief in supernatural entities. Many Filipinos have grown up hearing stories of the Amamongo from their grandparents or elders, instilling a sense of wonder and caution about the mysterious world that lies beyond human comprehension. The origins of the Amamongo legend can be linked to various cultural and historical influences. Some researchers suggest that the tales of the Amamongo could have emerged as a way to explain unexplained phenomena in the dense forests, such as strange noises or mysterious disappearances. Additionally, the legends may have been influenced by the encounters with large primates or other indigenous creatures that were unfamiliar to the local communities. The concept of humanoid ape-like creatures exists in many cultures around the world. While the specific physical descriptions and characteristics vary, the underlying theme of these creatures being elusive, mysterious and supernatural in nature is consistent. The parallels between the Amamongo and other cryptids provide a fascinating insight into the shared human fascination with the unknown and the unexplained. As modernization and urbanization sweep through the Philippines, the stories of the Amamongo face challenges in retaining their traditional significance. Some researchers argue that the spread of scientific knowledge and skepticism has led to a decline in belief in such cryptids. However, the Amamongo remains a cultural symbol that continues to be celebrated in festivals, literature, and local art. It's difficult to give an exact number of caves in the Grand Canyon as new caves are still being discovered and the number is constantly changing. However, it's estimated that there are over 1,000 known caves within the Grand Canyon National Park boundaries. These caves vary in size and shape and many of them are not accessible to the public due to safety concerns or to protect the delicate cave ecosystems. Various interesting discoveries are said to have been made at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. It's due to the vast, largely unexplored caves, there's been whispers that the area is holding many secrets, with one of the lesser-known ones being that the area may have once been the home of an underground ancient civilization, with those who explored the area saying that artifacts were found and that they belonged to the ancient Egyptians. This interesting story starts in 1909, when an explorer by the name of G. E. Kincaid found a variety of strange artifacts while exploring the Grand Canyon. He was sent there by the Smithsonian Institution, saying that he was told to explore the large caverns that were covered by a large entrance that was almost inaccessible. The team was led by Smithsonian anthropologist S. A. Jordan, but it was Kincaid who had allegedly made the discovery. The team reported that once inside, they found that the caves were in the shape of a wheel, saying that once they made their way inside the caverns, they found various artifacts, including copper artifacts and statues. The team also reported that the area was so big that it could have been inhabited by up to 50,000 people, noting that it was easily big enough to hold an ancient civilization. Although people living underground sounds like something from a movie, Derinkuyu is an underground city that was inhabited by people during the 8th to 7th century BC. Officials said the following about the discovery. Once the team started to look closely at the artifact, they noticed that they didn't match anything in their records and didn't match anything that had been found in the region, most notably those of the Native Americans. These artifacts more closely resembled those that were coming out of Egypt. The big question was, how did these ancient artifacts end up in a deep cavern within the Grand Canyon? And was there an ancient Egyptian civilization that had somehow made their way here? 
end quote. The Smithsonian later came forward and said that the team that had been sent down into the Grand Canyon didn't find anything and that they have no proof that anything had been found. The only reply that the Smithsonian has given about the story is saying that they didn't find anything. As of right now, skeptics have said there is no credible evidence to suggest that there is an underground Egyptian city beneath the Grand Canyon. This is a common theory that has been circulating for decades, but there is no factual basis to support it. The mysterious photograph captured inside the Grand Caverns There's been a number of interesting photographs that have been captured in national parks. One of these was taken in the Grand Caverns in 1895 by Oren Jeffries. There's a limited amount of information on this photograph, but the story goes that amateur photographer Oren Jeffries was exploring an unmapped section of Grand Cavern, something that few people have done due to stories of disappearances and encountering mysterious creatures. The caverns he was exploring were located in southwestern Virginia, and in recent years there's been a variety of theories that have been put forward that suggest the caverns aren't just caverns, but could be home to underground networks. In fact, this has been backed up in recent years by hikers who have said that they discovered underground networks while exploring the area. Oren Jeffries made his way into one of the caverns and due to not being able to see anything decided to conduct a photographic experiment where he would point his camera out into the darkness and take a long exposure shot. For those unaware, a long exposure technique takes advantage of slow shutter speeds which in turn allows the user to capture the motion of a moving element or more light from a night scene. During one of these sessions, he heard something moving deep in the cave, and due to him being alone and worried, he decided to set off one of the flashes in order to see what it was. After he left the cavern, he developed the photograph and could see that he had captured what appeared to be three humanoid-like creatures. He then approached the local newspaper and told them that three humanoids could be seen looking in his direction, and that after the photograph was taken, he ran out of the cavern as fast as he could. Interestingly, when researchers later enhanced the photo, they detailed that they could see one of the creatures raising its arm, with some suggesting that the humanoid may have had something in its hand like a rock, and that had Orin stayed just a few more moments, he may have been attacked by the creature. The Mysterious Disappearance of Adam Clayton Lyle Jones at the Grand Canyon Though the investigative services branch of the law enforcement generally try to solve cases as efficiently and quickly as possible. This sadly is not always the case, and most often than not, cases tend to grow cold for months or years afterwards. These cases are not closed and remain open and may become active should new evidence surface. Kathy Cupper, one of the spokespeople for the Investigative Services branch, said the following. It's always there on the table. Sometimes a tip will come in, or someone will hear something, and it will go active again. End quote. Adam Clayton Lyle Jones is one of the unfortunate missing individuals whose case has grown cold. Jones went missing on the 31st of March back in 2011 and has not yet been found. The man, who was only 23 at the time of his disappearance and would now be 33 years old, was last said to have been last seen by his family in the Gulf Breeze in Florida. His family claim he left home early in the afternoon in a blue Oldsmobile Delta 88 and that the only personal possession he took with him was his laptop, no other notable belongings. Little did Jones's family realize that would be the last time they would ever get to see him again. It took until the 5th of May 2011 for a park ranger to acknowledge the abandoned Delta 88 car parked at the South Rim Center of the Grand Canyon National Park. At the time, Jones had not yet been reported as a missing person and therefore not initially considered as a victim. The park ranger managed to contact Jones's parents about the abandoned car, who then proceeded to file the missing person's report to the police. Contents found within the car included an itinerary of various routes of California cities and places in Denver, Colorado. Surprisingly, there was not a mobile phone in the car, as Jones did not have his phone on him when he went missing. To this day, investigators have no idea whether he was lost or injured in the wilderness, or if something else, far more morbid, might have happened. Furthermore, there is no actual evidence that he even entered the Grand Canyon Park, no photographic or witness proof that he was there apart from the car parked in the car park. With so little to go off, investigators have had a difficult time finding any clues to Adam Jones' whereabouts. 
Trail cameras, also known as game cameras, are outdoor surveillance cameras designed to capture photos or videos of wildlife or other outdoor activities. They are typically used by hunters, wildlife enthusiasts, and researchers to monitor wildlife populations, track animal behavior, and study the habits of various animals. Trail cameras are equipped with a memory card to store the photos and videos they capture. The memory cards can be removed and replaced to view or transfer the images to a computer or other device. They are an excellent tool for studying wildlife and gaining insights into their behavior and habitat. Every so often, though, a trail camera captures something mysterious. This happened just recently when a trail camera captured a strange-looking creature standing next to a bear. We talked with the individual who posted the photograph who wishes to stay anonymous, and they said that the image was taken in northern Utah. They explained that they couldn't figure out what the creature was, and so posted it to various pages in order to try and get an answer. All this did was cause more confusion, as people couldn't work out what it was. One user said the following. Many trail camera photographs are hard to study, as the object in question can sometimes be at a weird angle, and this makes it hard to work out the size of the creature. However, in this image we can clearly see that it's standing next to a bear and that it measures over twice the size of it. It's really hard to figure out what type of creature this could be. End quote. Others carried on and said that due to its size and shape, it matches the overall description of a large, hairy humanoid, also pointing out that Utah has been a hotspot for these creatures, with hikers and outdoorsmen who ventured out into the wilderness in and around Utah, saying that they've had several run-ins with these creatures. The user who posted the photograph said that they were part of a team that investigated Bigfoot sightings, and that throughout the years, the team got sent various images and videos of mysterious creatures, but noted that the majority of them could be explained. They said that this was one of the only ones that they struggled to explain. They further added that they were nervous to post the photograph, as they didn't want to be ridiculed, or have people think they were trying to prove the existence of Bigfoot. The poster said, they just generally have no idea what this is, and wanted to see if other people could explain it. Interestingly, for hundreds of years, mysterious humanoid creatures have been encountered across the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia. One interesting story is that of the original Murfreesboro Mud Monster sighting. Considered to be one of the most peculiar sightings ever reported, the Murfreesboro Mud Monster was a humanoid creature that was mass sighted, and would eventually lead the police of the small town of Murfreesboro to conduct an official investigation into the beast to bring about some order to their small town. On the 25th of June, back in 1973, within the small town of Murfreesboro, Illinois, a young couple would claim to come face to face with a massive bipedal humanoid creature later referred to as the Murfreesboro Mud Monster. According to the young couple, their encounter happened sometime around midnight while they had been parked at the side of a river. The couple, a young man and young woman by the names of Randy Needham and Judy Johnson, claimed that they decided to stop their car at the end of 23rd Street, located in Riverside Park, in an area that gave them a clear view of the surface of the big muddy river. The reason for their late-night isolation was later explained by the couple as being a necessary precaution, as Judy's father had disapproved of the two dating, and so were unable to find a more public location to hang out. Although the exact time of the sighting is unknown, it's believed that the event occurred sometime between 12 to 1 in the morning as the couple were listening to the radio and engaged in intimate action. As Judy Johnson and Randy Needham were in the middle of their interaction, the couple claimed to have heard what they described as a piercing roar, later detailed by Randy Needham as sounding somewhat similar to an eagle shrieking into a feedback microphone. The source of the sound appeared to have emanated from a nearby brush that rested only a few yards away from the vehicle, near the side of the big muddy river. Scared that a large, dangerous wild animal was nearby, Randy Needham shut off the car radio while he and Judy Johnson glanced around the immediate area, looking for any signs of a creature. A few seconds later, the couple claimed that another loud shriek had been heard that was slightly similar to the first, and watched as the brushwood in front of their vehicle began to sway dramatically. Hoping to scare away the creature, or to catch a better glimpse of it, Randy Needham immediately started his car and turned on the headlights. Within seconds, the creature exited from the brushwood and began rushing towards their vehicle. The couple would later describe the creature as having been a large, bipedal, ape-like creature that they would claim looked like an oversized gorilla. It walked on two legs, 
and was estimated from a sitting position to have stood around eight feet tall, with matted white hair and with spots of mud covering different sections of its body. As the creature walked closer to the vehicle, the couple claimed they could smell the scent of a foul, skunk-like odour. Fearing for their lives, Randy Needham immediately reversed his vehicle and drove out of the area, claiming that they narrowly escaped the monster. Once the couple made it back into the downtown area of Murfreesboro, Illinois, they entered into a heated debate on whether or not they should report the sighting to the local police. Judy Johnson at first refused to file a witness report, believing that it would lead to issues with her father, but was convinced by Randy Needham, who believed that the monster would soon attack other eyewitnesses. It would be at around two in the morning that the couple would decide to drive down to the Murfreesboro police station and report their sighting. Once Randy Needham and Judy Johnson arrived at the police station together, the couple immediately began filing a report with the former patrolman of the Murfreesboro police force, a man by the name of Ron Manwaring, who worked as a police chief for over several decades. According to Officer Ron Manwaring, the sighting had been described as an unknown creature sighting, with the beast having been compared to an oversized gorilla estimated to have been around eight feet tall, with matted white hair that was streaked with mud. Although the officers were hesitant to believe the claims of the two young adults, they began to grow increasingly interested when they discovered that the couple was scared of both public ridicule and Judy's father finding out about their indiscretions. Additional reports of the Murfreesboro mud monster would be made by several police officers who were tasked with investigating the original sightings report of Randy Needham and Judy Johnson. Believing that Randy Needham and Judy Johnson were not playing a prank and had nothing to gain from the witness claims, the Murfreesboro Police Department would send two officers to investigate the claims further. The two responding officers, Merrill Lindsay and Jimmy Nash, were sent to the location of the sighting within minutes and arrived at the area of the supposed boat ramp in Riverside Park. Within a few minutes of investigating, Officer Jimmy Nash found a set of peculiar tracks that he described as being approximately 10 to 12 inches long and roughly 3 inches wide, following in a long line down the riverbank side pressed deep into the mud. However, before Officer Nash could investigate the tracks further, he would then report that he and his partner heard what they would later detail was a horrifyingly shrill screech emanating from close by. Believing that the creature was hiding in some nearby brush, waiting to attack, Officer Nash attempted to pull out his revolver, but dropped it in a panic and ran back to his police cruiser and left the scene of the sighting. When questioned about the sound, Nash claimed that the sound was the most hideous sound he had ever heard and had originated at an estimated distance of about 300 feet away from them. He said the following, The most incredible shriek I've ever heard. It was in those bushes. It was no bobcat or screech owl. We hightailed it out of there. End quote. Officer Jimmy Nash and Officer Merrill Lindsay would return to the Murfreesboro Police Station, hoping to gather additional officers for backup before returning to the site. It would be at around this time that the officers would report the screech and their encounter with the unknown creature, sparking serious interest from the local law enforcement. At around two in the morning on the 26th of June, officers Jimmy Nash and Merrill Lindsay would return to the area of their encounter alongside Officer Bob Scott and the original eyewitness Randy Needham. The four would soon discover several more tracks located near the muddy banks of the river, with impressions that appeared to originate from within the water and exit back into the water. Officer Merrill Lindsay would return to her patrol car to retrieve a camera for documenting the evidence, and the three others would stay in the area of the sighting, following the tracks down the riverbank. It was at around this time that the three men claimed to hear splashing in the river that sounded like a large creature walking in knee-deep water. Although they were unable to see anything in the water, the men would continue their search until they heard the same horrible scream that Officer Nash had reported earlier in the morning. The sudden scream caused the three men to run back to a patrol car, where they took the time to regain their composure and once again begin their search for the creature. For the next several hours, the men would claim to hear the same eerie splashing sound they believed to have been the large bipedal creature walking through the water, but would discover nothing. Their search would continue through the early morning until the sun rose. At around seven in the morning, the group would end their search, believing that the monster had disappeared. On the 26th of June, roughly 14 hours since the end of the reported sightings of the Murfreesboro mud monster from the Murfreesboro Police Department, a five-year-old boy by the name of Christian Barrell 
would claim to witness a monster with a similar description at around 10.30 in the evening. The story was so compelling and considered substantial evidence of a Sasquatch-like creature roaming the American countryside that the story would eventually be picked up by the New York Times. The sudden popularity in the town, coupled with the momentary fame of the eyewitnesses, would lead to the Murfreesboro mud monster legends becoming a solidified piece of history for the town and would lead to the end of the hunting parties for the creature, as the residents considered the monster to be a symbolic mascot to be adored. This interesting photograph was just published to social media, but those who've seen it can't seem to agree on what it shows. The black object sticks out against the clouds and can be seen hovering close to the ground. Some users speculated that it was some sort of atmospheric phenomena, while others who allegedly saw the object said that it suddenly manifested in the sky. The reason it caught people's attention was because of how it was moving, with it reminding some of a symbiote. Most of the residents who saw the object agreed that it wasn't something like a cloud or balloon and went on to detail that it appeared to be shape-shifting. Interestingly, these types of sightings have been given a name and they go by atmospheric jellyfish. Individuals who have seen them have said they're unlike anything they've seen before and that they look like giant jellyfish hovering around in the sky. This unexplained phenomena has been cited by hundreds of people across the globe including top meteorological scientists, military bases and cities. These strange lights or objects have confused many people, which is why many have called them mysterious flying objects. According to NASA, these objects may be the result of space debris reflecting off of the northern lights, but it's important to note that they've been observed in various countries and at different altitudes. One user said the following, It's an atmospheric thing. I see this a lot when there's thunderstorms around. Under the right temperature and airflow conditions, you can see these strange objects form. End quote. While this user said the following, I saw something similar to this in Texas last year while I was driving. I wasn't able to pull over and take pictures, but I remember thinking that the object looked like a jellyfish, as it appeared to have tentacle-like appendages. End quote. Interestingly, a similar incident was reported across various areas in London, with residents saying that the police turned up soon afterwards and told people to move out of the area. Many people aren't aware of this, but police have investigated mysterious aircrafts in the past. In fact, there have been several documented cases of law enforcement officers encountering strange objects and glowing lights while on duty and reporting them to their superiors. One well-known case occurred in 1966 in Portage County, Ohio, where several police officers witnessed a series of strange lights in the sky and admitted to chasing the object for over 30 minutes. Another notable case occurred in 1973 in Mansfield, Ohio, where two police officers reported seeing a strange aircraft hovering over a nearby field. In addition, there have been numerous cases where civilian witnesses have called the police to report sightings of mysterious objects and officers have responded to investigate. While the police are not typically equipped to conduct in-depth investigations into these types of sightings, they may collect eyewitness testimony, take photographs or videos, and file reports with appropriate agencies, such as the FAA or local research organizations. There's certainly no shortage of mysterious encounters with unknown objects. The Tangmere Sighting On the 1st of June back in 1950, a landing Royal Air Force pilot, piloting a Gloucester Meteor, one of the fastest jets in the world at the time, claimed to have sighted and passed by an unidentified object that was believed to have been hovering over the Tangmere Royal Air Force Base. As the pilot was preparing his descent towards the base, he claimed that he witnessed the body of the craft shining with a bright light that surrounded its chassis, with the body of the craft rotating in a circle as it passed by his aircraft. Using his altimeter, the pilot estimated that the object must have been travelling somewhere around 20,000 feet, flying in the direction of east from the Portsmouth area. The report was later confirmed after the Royal Air Force Base Tangmere inquired to the Royal Air Force Base Wartling, found in Sussex, if they had also picked up the object on their radar equipment. According to the Wartling radar station, they claimed to have watched the craft on its PPI screen at around the same time the pilot claimed to have seen the craft, between 2.30 and 3 in the afternoon. Although a series of reports surrounding unidentified objects predated this witness account, 
The Tang Mir sighting is often described as Britain's first flying saucer incident. Shortly following the details and confirmation of the military report, the British government would establish the Flying Saucer Working Party, the British Ministry of Defence's first official investigation into the flying saucer phenomenon. No further information surrounding the report would come forward. The William Schaffner Interception One of the strangest mysterious aircraft incidents in history, an encounter that would result in the passing of a Royal Air Force pilot, would be reported on the 8th of September back in 1970 and lead to serious investigations made by the British Ministry of Defence following the impossible-to-explain event. According to the military reports, the Royal Air Force pilot, known as William Schaffner, was tasked with intercepting a peculiar aircraft that had first been spotted on radar by three different independent radar detection stations, including the Royal Air Force Base, Filingdale's Early Radar Warning Station, the United States Air Force Thule Air Base Radar Station, located in Greenland and the Colorado Springs radar base at the Cheyenne Mountain Complex in Colorado, USA. Fearing that the object was some form of unknown advanced aircraft, William Schaffner was given the order to intercept the object over the North Sea and engage in a firefight if necessary. Unfortunately for the Royal Air Force pilot, that would be the last time that William Schaffner would ever be seen. Radar detected his plane dropping from its height, and shortly thereafter, William Schaffner was unresponsive. Roughly four months later, the aircraft of William Schaffner would be recovered from the seabed. Oddly enough, the entire plane was relatively untouched, with the main body of the plane staying enclosed underwater. When investigators looked inside the craft to better understand what could have happened to the pilot, they quickly noticed that William was nowhere to be found within the completely enclosed aircraft. Various parts of America are said to be home to mysterious creatures, and one such area is that of North America. Back in 2014, a trail camera was placed in Mossy Rock in Lewis County, and it captured a mysterious creature. The unknown bipedal humanoid was soon given the name of the creature of Mossy Rock. A man had placed a trail camera on his property, which was said to be located out in the middle of the woods. There had been some strange sightings in the area, with the man coming forward and saying that strange noises could be heard late at night, and so he decided to set up one of these cameras in order to catch the culprit. The man who posted the image said the following. The backstory of this image is that it was captured on a trail camera, and the guy who showed me it had been down at his friend's house in Mossy Rock. The property is out in the backwoods, and it's surrounded by nothing but deep woods. Around the same time that this picture was taken, they heard a screaming noise coming from just behind the house, which they said didn't belong to a cougar, coyote, or bear. They wanted to figure out what was causing these noises and so set up motion-sensitive trail cameras to capture it. When checking the footage the next morning, this is what they found. It's an amazing photo and it makes every other image I've seen look laughable in comparison. I get really annoyed when people try to argue its authenticity. These guys didn't even know how to send the picture from their computer to their phone. They don't know what Photoshop is. If this photograph is genuine, then it's easily one of the best images we have of this creature and proves there's large bipedal humanoids roaming around in dense regions of America. One user said the following, I've visited this area, and there's definitely something going on in these woods. I'm glad that I was with my son at the time, because otherwise no one would have believed my story. On the second night of our trip, we began to hear noises around our camp. This happened at night, so we attributed this to wildlife. However, what we couldn't explain was the loud screams that echoed through the woods. I've spent the majority of my life outdoors, but I had never heard such a noise before. It didn't match typical wildlife that you find in the area. Fast forward to the next day, me and my son decided to look around the camp in order to see if we could work out what was making those noises. All around us were huge footprints that were double the size of my boots. After making this discovery, we immediately packed up and left the area. It's an experience that I'll never forget, and when I hear these stories, I'm now a little more open-minded. Interestingly, this isn't the first time that hikers and residents within Washington have reported seeing such a creature. In fact, these sightings have become somewhat of a regular occurrence that investigators have now labelled Washington as a hotspot and it's led hikers and investigators to go out into these areas in the hopes of finding evidence. What these creatures are, though, depends on who you ask, with scientists and anthropologists saying that you're not going to find such a creature 
with them detailing that if such a creature did exist, and it was related to some great ape species or even a Neanderthal, then we would see evidence of things like bones in forests, saying that you would need a substantial number of these creatures to keep them going, and that as of right now, the evidence points towards them not being genuine. Researchers who have looked into this topic have said that this is actually helping them, and that they've said that we have to start with the process of elimination. Some of these investigators who have spent a large amount of time in these areas have said there's definitely been some interesting correlations that they've picked up on, one being that sometimes when these creatures are seen, strange lights have also been seen in the nearby area. What many people find interesting with these reports is that they aren't anything new. In fact, they can be traced back hundreds of years. Robert Robinson has said that one of the oldest known sightings of a creature fitting the description of the skunk ape took place in the early 1800s, with reports of other large humanoid creatures going back even further. The first reported sightings were by Native Americans, and since then, it's been suggested that there's different kinds. According to the reports, a group of sailors landed north of the Gulf of Mexico. As they had pulled into the bay, they claimed to have spotted a creature covered in hair from head to toe and appeared similar to a five-foot-tall baboon. The encounter was recorded back in 1818, but sightings of baboons the size of men would continue to be reported throughout the area until the mid-1800s. The descriptions of the creature's odour are often conflicting, with many eyewitness reports claiming that the smell is impossible to compare to any other known smell. Some witnesses have claimed that the smell of the creature was similar to a swampy fish smell, with a mixture of rotten fish and eggs. An even smaller number of witnesses have claimed that the creature gives off a somewhat chemical smell, comparing it to hydrogen sulfide, methane or swamp gas. While some testimonies have said that the creature suffers from an odour that is more akin to a wet dog. More commonly, however, the odour of the creature is reportedly exactly similar to that of a skunk, which is where the creature derives its name. The physical descriptions of the creature are far more consistent, with claims that the skunk ape is humanoid in shape, but without a defined neck, leaving its head resting flat on its shoulders. The creature has a human-like face. Fur covering its body except for its face and palms has well-defined muscles despite the covering of the fur and appears to have a hump on its back that may or may not extend beyond the top of the creature's head. Researchers have often quoted that two prominent early Native American tribes that had once resided around the modern-day areas of Florida and Louisiana feature reported encounters with the creature within their local mythologies that directly match with descriptions commonly associated with the skunk ape creature. This claim, however, is only partly true. One of the local Native American tribes features stories of a swamp-like creature referred to as the Shawanoki. Some researchers have incorrectly translated this to mean a mysterious swamp-dwelling creature, and so have made the connection that the creature must be referred to the skunk ape, of which is commonly reported in areas of swamps. The truth, however, is that Shawanoki directly translates to snapping mouth, and was more commonly used to refer to hidden alligators or snapping turtles local to the area. An additional note to make is that the coincidence of Shawanoki referring to the swamp and the skunk ape often being reported in or around a swamp is hardly a coincidence at all. Many of the areas throughout Louisiana and Florida feature swamps as their only form of wilderness, as it is nearly impossible to pave or develop any form of modern construction within swamp grounds. The other prominent Native American tribe does indeed feature a story that directly matches with reports and encounters with the skunk ape. Referred to by the tribe as the Esti Kapkaki, of which directly translates to the tall man, the creature is a reportedly humanoid being that is often regarded as the protector of the surrounding woods and swamplands. If one was to find themselves chasing the creature, before long, they would witness the animal vanish from sight, as if disappearing in the fog. Other titles for the creature were known as the Sand People, the Mangrove People, or the People Eaters. In the early morning, sometime around six in the morning, two witnesses were driving into the town of Gainesville, located within Florida, when they reported one of the first documented encounters with the skunk ape. According to the two eyewitnesses, a young mother was traveling with her son. As they were traveling down Route 441, passing a four-lane highway with an open grassy area that separates the lanes, a tall, humanoid creature, covered from head to toe in thick matted fur, was standing between the lanes, strolling across the grassy fields. The sighting, which occurred in the summer of 2000, allowed the witnesses to see the creature in bright daylight 
despite it being only six in the morning. However, they reported that it did not register what they had just seen, and it wasn't until they drove closer that they realized what they were looking at. According to the mother, the two had just passed by the Painesville Prairie Preserve, a state park of more than 21,000 acres that consisted mostly of flat swamplands and unending miles of wet prairies and overgrown marshlands. Believing the humanoid figure to have been a possible illegal hunter dressed up in matching camouflage, and due to the fact that no other cars were on the highway, the mother then slowed almost to a halt to get a better look at the humanoid creature. The witnesses then claimed that the creature, described as a large beast covered with brown hair, turned to face the two of them and began travelling towards their lane. Unsure of what to do, the driver stayed parked on the highway lane and waited for the creature to cross into the surrounding swampy nature preserve, watching its movements as it continued to pass them. At first, the witnesses claimed that they thought the creature could have been a normal but rather tall man, dressed in animal skins and furs that wrapped around him like a sweater, but as it walked towards them, they realized that the creature was not human and appeared more like a humanoid ape-like creature. Over the course of a few seconds, the humanoid ape-like creature crossed the highway lanes and walked over the surrounding bank, disappearing into the nearby state park. During her report, the woman would claim that the creature had to have stood somewhere between seven and a half to eight feet in height, though it was impossible to accurately judge given the fact that she and her son were sitting in the car. Additionally, despite the fact that the ape-like creature was covered in fur from head to toe, the driver claimed that clear outlines of thick muscle could be seen that appeared to be very human except for its large, thick feet that appeared to be more like padding. The young boy would claim that it appeared that the creature ran quickly with a hunched-over posture and looked like a human monkey or a caveman and said that it crossed the four lanes within a few seconds. Another sighting of the creature was made in Brevard County, Florida. On the 15th of September back in 1989, a brother and sister would witness an eight-foot-tall humanoid creature that would reignite the legends of the skunk ape in the region. According to the two eyewitnesses, they had been driving from Florida to Kissimmee late in the night, sometime around 11 in the evening. As the two were driving along Nova Road, located within Brevard County, the brother needed a temporary break to relieve himself after several hours of driving and so pulled over to the side of the road for roughly 30 seconds. As he was standing outside the car, the sister began shouting that someone was coming and that the brother should finish before they got in trouble. Glancing around, the brother then noticed what he described as a seven or eight foot tall, dark humanoid creature running towards him, exiting from an area in the surrounding woods where snapped branches and debris could be seen. At first, the brother was unsure of who the person was and worried that perhaps the person running towards them needed help. Due to Nova Road being a desolate 30-mile stretch of road that cuts through thousands of acres of untouched swamp and wetlands, the brother was certain that there should be no one in the wilderness unless they were in danger and needed help. Upon closer examination of the fast-approaching creature, it became clear to the brother that the tall humanoid was something completely inhuman, covered entirely in hair and striding along the ground as if the creature was preparing to quietly attack. Fearing for his life, the brother ran back to the car and began pulling away as fast as possible. After driving several miles, the brother began to slow the car down once more for another break when he noticed the creature following them on the road, now lit up in a red glowing tint due to the car's brake lights. Without any further hesitation, the brother slammed on the pedal and left the creature behind, watching as it jumped back into the nearby swampland. A few months ago, it was reported that sheep across the world were observed walking around in circles, and people have now said that the phenomenon has just started up again. Due to this strange behaviour, it's caused some to suggest that animals may be sensing something. Interestingly, some animals have been observed to have the ability to detect earthquakes before they occur. This is believed to be due to their heightened sensitivity to changes in their environment, such as vibrations or electromagnetic fields. One animal that is known for its ability to detect earthquakes is the common toad. Researchers have found that toads will often leave their breeding sites and move to higher ground several days before an earthquake occurs. Similarly, other studies have shown that certain species of fish, snakes, and even domesticated dogs and cats have exhibited unusual behavior prior to an earthquake. Scientists have said that not all animals have this ability, 
and more research is needed to fully understand the mechanisms behind this phenomenon. The United States Geological Survey said the following about this phenomenon. Evidence abounds of animals, fish, birds, reptiles and insects exhibiting strange behavior anywhere from weeks to seconds before an earthquake. However, consistent and reliable behavior prior to seismic events and a mechanism explaining how it could work still eludes us. End quote. One person commented on social media saying that they have a koi pond and she observed her fish swimming around in circles for hours. This event happened in early March and she said that a few days later the region where she lives was hit by a four-magnitude earthquake. China is located in an area of the world that is particularly prone to earthquakes due to its location on the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire is a region that encircles the Pacific Ocean and is characterized by high levels of seismic activity and volcanic eruptions. China is also situated on the boundary between the Eurasian Plate and the Indian Plate, which are two of the Earth's tectonic plates. The collision of these two plates has created a complex system of fault lines that runs through China, resulting in frequent earthquakes. While earthquakes are common in China, the country has implemented measures to mitigate their impact. This includes seismic monitoring systems, earthquake-resistant building codes, and public education campaigns on earthquake preparedness. Oddly enough, this strange behavior was observed a few months back, when sheep were seen walking around in circles. It was reported that hundreds of sheep had been observed walking in circles for over 12 days. Not long after the first report was made, others came forward and said that sheep were observed doing the same thing across different countries, with reports coming in from the United Kingdom and Mongolia, with local farmers confused as to why the sheep were doing this for such a long period of time, with one farmer saying that it happens every so often, but has never lasted more than an hour. The cause of this strange behavior is still not known. It's known that China is often hit by earthquakes, and at the time it caused some to suggest that perhaps the sheep could feel something happening. The United States Geological Survey said the following. The earliest reference we have to unusual animal behavior prior to a significant earthquake is from Greece in 373 BC. Rats, weasels, snakes and centipedes reportedly left their homes and headed for safety several days before a destructive earthquake. Anecdotal evidence abounds of animals, fish, birds, reptiles and insects exhibiting strange behavior anywhere from weeks to seconds before an earthquake. Most but not all scientists pursuing this mystery are in China or Japan. An earthquake forecast was made in China several decades ago based on small earthquakes and unusual animal activity. Many people chose to sleep outside of their homes and thus were spared when the main earthquake indeed occurred and caused widespread destruction. However, usually no large earthquake follows this type of seismic activity and unfortunately, many earthquakes are preceded by no precursory events whatsoever. End quote. It's for this reason that people worry when they see animals acting like this, with residents fearing that a big earthquake could hit the region within the next few days. As mentioned, for centuries there have been accounts of animals acting strange before an earthquake devastates a region. A few years back, scientists came forward and said that they have filmed the behavior of wild animals prior to a quake and believe this could be documented evidence of animals behaving differently just prior to an earthquake. The researchers were studying birds in Peru and found that days before an earthquake hit, the birds ran for shelter, with the team suggesting that the animals running for cover may be linked to airborne ions. As of right now, scientists and animal experts have said that there's several reasons why animals may walk in circles, saying that some animals, particularly those with poor eyesight, may use circling as a means of navigating. By walking in circles, they may be able to detect changes in their environment, such as the location of food or water sources, and orient themselves more accurately. Certain animals, especially those in captivity or under stress, may exhibit repetitive behaviors, including circling. This behavior may be a result of boredom, anxiety, or a lack of stimulation. In some cases, Animals may walk in circles due to neurological disorders, such as vestibular disease. This condition affects the inner ear, which can cause disorientation and loss of balance. Injury Animals may also walk in circles if they have sustained an injury to their limbs or other parts of their body. This behavior may be an attempt to alleviate pain or discomfort. 
It's important to note that circling behavior in animals should be investigated and monitored by a veterinarian, as it can sometimes be a symptom of a more serious underlying condition. All across North America are reported sightings of large, hairy humanoids, with those who've allegedly encountered them describing them as being covered in hair from head to toe and commonly encountered within or nearby the untamed woods and landscapes found all across the United States and Canada. Oddly enough, not every state or local area across North America refers to the creature as the same name, and more commonly, local legends will feature similar descriptions of the creature, but with slight variations in its design alongside differing names. Mr. Kramer of Mississippi reported that he captured this photograph in the woods. The photograph appears to show a large humanoid creature standing next to some trees, with the eyewitnesses saying that when he came back to the area and measured the trees, they estimated that this creature is around 8 feet in height. It's interesting to note though that this creature does fit the description of other photos that have been captured. One user said the following, This looks quite convincing to me, as most do look like people in suits, but this one doesn't seem to show that. This doesn't however mean that the photo is genuine, and hopefully the owner can have the right people carry out an investigation to get to the bottom of this mystery. Others said that with these older photographs, it's hard to track down where it was taken, and any more information that could help us get to the bottom of what this thing was. Some amateur researchers who've spent years looking into the creature did say though this was the first time that they've seen this image, and said that further examination of the photograph should be conducted. For years now, people across the United States have been encountering mysterious creatures, and some of these happen in places like national parks or mountainous areas. It's also not uncommon to hear mysterious sounds in these regions. Although nearly impossible to believe, a series of mass sightings reported back in 1973 within a small American town known as Murfreesboro would lead to the local police department spearheading an official investigation into the existence of a local humanoid creature. The Murfreesboro mud monster is believed to be a large humanoid bipedal ape-like creature similar to modern-day sightings of the North American Bigfoot. Witness descriptions of the creature claim it to have white-coloured fur and appearing similar in design to an oversized gorilla with splotches of mud matting its fur. The first sightings of the Murfreesboro mud monster were recorded in the summer of 1973 and would be spotted by several dozen independent eyewitnesses up until the modern day, where sightings still continue. The primary location of reported sightings of the Murfreesboro mud monster is along the banks of the Big Muddy River, located near the small town of Murfreesboro. Witness accounts detail that the head of the creature appeared spade-shaped, similar to reports of the Flatwoods monster. The texture of the monster's fur was also described as being similar in likeness to the shaggy fur of an English sheepdog. In several reports describing the Murfreesboro mud monster, the creature was claimed to have glowing red eyes, similar to the brightness of a distant streetlight. In other reports, the creature is claimed to have no visible face as it appears to have been completely covered in the white fur. On the 26th of June, a young five-year-old boy by the name of Christian Barrel would claim to witness a monster with a similar description at around 10.30 in the evening. According to the child's mother, he has been given a glass jar that he could use to catch fireflies with. Seeing a large group of fireflies alongside the bank of the big muddy river, Christian travelled near the water and saw what he described as a large white shape rise up from behind a fence that separated their property from a neighbor's property. Believing that he saw a ghost, five-year-old Christian Barrel ran back to his home, dropping the jar, and found his dad, crying to him and telling him what he had seen. Although the dad did not believe that his son had seen anything resembling a ghost, he comforted the child and said that the creature was gone and would not hurt him. Several days later, the father claimed that as he was talking to his neighbour, the neighbour told him about a sighting his family had experienced on the 26th of June of what he believed was a large white ape-like monster walking through his backyard and disappearing into the nearby Big Muddy River. According to the neighbour, his daughter, a young teenager by the name of Cheryl Ray, claimed to have encountered the mysterious creature sometime at around 11 in the evening, and this was while she had been sitting on the enclosed front porch with her boyfriend, Randy Creeth. According to the young couple, while in the middle of a conversation, they claimed to have heard rustling coming from about 15 feet away from where they were sitting. At first, the couple assumed that the rustling was caused by small animals running through the brush, 
but soon became suspicious when the rustling started to grow louder and continued across multiple bushes. Cheryl Ray and Randy Creeth believed that the sound was most likely being caused by a group of young neighborhood kids who were spying on the young couple as a prank. This theory would cause Cheryl Ray to go inside the home to turn on the outside porch light, while Randy Creeth decided to leave the enclosed porch to confront the kids. However, as the front outdoor porch light came on, Randy soon witnessed a massive white furred creature standing an estimated 10 feet away from where he had been standing, causing him to freeze in fear. Cheryl Ray would later provide the following description of the events. Randy and I were sitting in my parents' breezeway when we heard something in the woods. We both went down, but Randy was walking a little bit ahead. Then he called me over, and there it was. We stood there looking at it. It was really tall and hairy. I think it was white, but it was dirty and matted. It had a real bad odour. It was really rank. I never smelled anything like it. It seemed like an eternity we stood there, and then it just turned around and walked off into the woods. We could hear it trampling through the woods. End quote. Randy Creeth would later draw a silhouette outline of the creature, showing that the monster apparently had a spade-shaped head similar to the Flatwoods monster. He would later provide the following description of the creature. The thing I remember was the bulk of it, the shape, the human form, and the stench of the river slime it apparently had on it. It was about eight feet tall, and at least as built as a New York football player. We were within 15 feet of it, close enough to see the body, the texture of the fur, which was long and hairy. It was like an English sheepdog, end quote. Both witnesses would claim that the creature had glowing red eyes that were similar to the glow of a distant streetlight. Its height was estimated to have been around seven feet tall, with the creature believed to have weighed more than 350 pounds if compared to a human being. Additionally, the creature's arms were believed to have been elongated, similar to a gorilla's arms. After staring at the creature for a total of 30 seconds, the large humanoid beast turned around and appeared to have walked away into the surrounding bushes and disappeared. Shortly thereafter, Cheryl Ray and Randy Creeth would contact the local Murfreesboro Police Department and describe their sighting of the creature. Police officers Jimmy Nash and Ron Man Waring would immediately respond to the call of the creature sighting, believing that the monster was the same creature previously spotted by the Murfreesboro Police Department at around the same time on the previous night. Once the two officers arrived on scene, they quickly noticed what they described was a powerful odour that was unlike anything they had previously encountered. When trying to locate the source of the smell, the officers would stumble across a set of large footprints that were similar to the recovered prints seen near the bank of the Big Muddy River. Believing that the footprints were evidence of the creature, 14 additional officers would be sent to investigate the mysterious creature sighting, including an officer by the name of Jerry Nellis, who had been trained as a dog handler with the Carbondale Police Department. According to the official police report, Jerry Nellis brought along his German shepherd by the name of Reb. Official Murfreesboro Police Department records describe Reb as one of the most reliable canines on the force, having successfully assisted in past search and rescue missions. As the officers gathered together, the team decided to follow the tracks left behind the creature in the hopes of bringing it down. As the officers followed a set of tracks, they discovered what they later described as a foul-smelling black slime that followed the trail from the back porch of the Ray home down into the nearby Big Muddy River. Using the strange slime as a source of scent, Officer Jerry Nellis's dog Reb began to follow the creature's scent with the officers following closely behind. The officers recalled in their report that the trail appeared to have been littered with broken tree limbs and trampled underbrush that showed the creature was far larger than any known human being. The trail ended near a quarry of rocks and granite stones, where the dog appeared to have trouble relocating the scent. After a minute or so, however, the dog picked up a new scent that followed a small trail through dense forest and alongside an embankment to the big muddy river that led to a small steep sloped pond. Before long, the dog brought the officers to an abandoned barn located on the old Buller property, which rested north of the big muddy river, east of the Ray home. Once the dog reached the door of the barn, however, it began yelping and trembling, and was too scared to move any further. Believing that the monster was in the barn, the officers decided to wait to enter the barn before additional backup arrived. 
It's at this point that the official police record surrounding the incident becomes muddled and inconsistent. Some officers claim that after additional backup arrived from neighboring police departments, totaling about a dozen patrol cars, the monster had broken out of the barn through a back wall and disappeared into the nearby river. Other reports claim that the officers entered the barn and discovered no evidence of the creature, but recovered more samples of the mysterious black slime. Additional reports claim that the officers encountered and neutralized the monster within the barn and had made attempts to cover up the recovery of the creature's body. Regardless of the events, the search for the creature was immediately called off following the searching of the barn and the officers would return to their patrols and departments. The witness testimony from the officers and future sources of information conflict and often contradict each other when it comes to the recovery of the black slime. In one report, an officer claims that the smell of the slime was so putrid, it was immediately covered with dirt and buried. Another report claims that officers gathered up the black slime as evidence of the events, though no evidence of recovered black slime is found in the modern day. Shortly after this encounter, the police chief of the Murfreesboro Police Department, a man by the name of Toby Berger, would put out warnings to local newspapers and officers, claiming that the encounters or sightings of the creature should be toned down or possibly censored to prevent the development of mass hysteria, as the police chief claimed he was worried that one of the residents could become trigger-happy and accidentally hurt another resident of their small town. Despite these attempts at censorship, stories of the encounters would spread across the town of Murfreesboro, leading to the formation of small armed groups that would go hunting for the creature. As of right now, more and more information is being released about the mysterious entities that were sighted in Peru. Oddly enough, since the topic has been trending, locals have been posting photographs of the alleged creatures, with some describing them as giving off bright lights, while others have said that they have big heads with large eyes. This photograph was just posted online by a local called Alfredo. He details that he lives in Iquitos and that during the night, something was emitting a bright light in his garden. Thinking that it was someone with a flashlight, he decided to investigate. As he made his way outside, he could hear movement, and because of this, he was hesitant to approach. However, as he did, he encountered what he described was a humanoid-like figure that was emitting a bright light. It was so bright that it lit up his entire garden, and he even detailed that it hurt his eyes to look directly at it. He grabbed his phone and took several photographs, but due to how bright the light was, this entity only showed up in two of them. The whole encounter lasted no more than 20 seconds, and after the photographs were taken, Alfredo said that the light vanished from the being and it left the area. He switched on the light on his phone, but could no longer see the entity. After this, he quickly made his way inside. Interestingly, he said that this isn't the first time that these entities have been witnessed and detailed that locals have allegedly been encountering them now for several months. Black helicopters have also been observed in the area. Those who investigate the unknown have said that black helicopters have been a recurring and perplexing element that often accompanies reports of unidentified objects. These ominous aircraft, painted in dark hues and often lacking visible markings, have sparked intrigue and speculation among enthusiasts. The term black helicopters gained prominence during the 1970s and 1980s. These helicopters are characterized by their dark color, often devoid of standard aviation markings or insignia. Reports frequently describe them as flying low and maneuvering with an air of precision that hints at sophisticated technology. Some speculate that the helicopters are part of government agencies' efforts to monitor activity and investigate sightings. The association with black helicopters could be an attempt to maintain secrecy and avoid detection by civilian observers. As of right now, Peru is still trending on social media, and this is because residents are allegedly encountering seven-foot-tall entities. In a rural area called Alto Nanay, located in the northeastern part of Lima, Peru, residents who've lived in the area for several decades claim to be experiencing constant encounters with seven-foot-tall entities. These mysterious beings are said to have armored bodies and distinct features, such as large heads and yellow eyes. The villagers report that these creatures have been consistently attacking their community during the night since July 11th. 
The community is currently experiencing a state of fear and unease, primarily caused by a distressing incident involving a woman. According to reports, she was approached from behind and suffered a laceration to her neck after resisting the attacker. This unsettling event has left community members apprehensive, making it difficult for them to find solace and rest peacefully as they constantly feel threatened. Oddly enough, footage was released of the incident and those who saw it said they could make out a humanoid-like entity, while others noted that the creature appeared to be more bug-like. The Ikitu indigenous people have made accusations regarding advanced beings who they claim are impervious to their traditional hunting tools. These individuals are calling for assistance from the Peruvian military to ensure their safety against these interstellar trespassers. According to their accounts, the mysterious entities wear protective suits and possess an extraordinary ability to float using spherical footwear illuminated by a red light. According to community leader Jairo Riategui Avila, he described the individuals as beings from another planet. Jairo even attempted to fire at one of them twice, but they remained unharmed and eventually vanished. This extraordinary occurrence has caused great fear and concern within the community. In order to ensure the safety of their community, the villagers have organized night patrols. The authorities have conducted a visit to the vicinity and explored the outskirts of the village. According to these stories, many of the residents report that these entities have the ability to give off a blinding light. One particular evening, an eerie luminescence was observed coming from the fields beyond the village. The gentle hum of insects was replaced by a silence that seemed to stretch into eternity. It's reported that villagers peered out of their windows, captivated by the unearthly glow that painted the landscape in shades of pale blue. Locals said that some groups went out to the village's outskirts to investigate what was causing this light, and said that a figure emerged from the ethereal light. Standing at the boundary between the known and the unknown was a being unlike anything they had ever seen. According to those who witnessed the entity, its skin was a muted shade of grey, its lithe form almost floating above the ground. Large, almond-shaped eyes of shimmering silver peered curiously at the villagers, reflecting the moonlight in a mesmerizing dance. Fear mixed with awe as the villagers exchanged glances, their hearts pounding in anticipation of the encounter. One local said that the group quickly made their way out of there, and that for several weeks now these entities keep returning, with one of the locals saying that they've reached out to the military and said they want the sightings to end. Among the diverse and captivating array of beings that have allegedly been encountered by humans, the grey entity is perhaps one of the most commonly reported. With their distinctive appearance and a prevalence in law, these entities have become synonymous with the search for advanced life. Often referred to simply as the greys, they are allegedly humanoid beings, characterized by their small stature, large heads, prominent black almond-shaped eyes, and lack of discernible noses and mouths. Their skin is typically described as grey or pale, and they are often depicted as having slim bodies with elongated limbs. This archetype of advanced beings first gained prominence in the mid-20th century, although researchers into the unknown have said that cave paintings depict these creatures, causing some to suggest that humans have had encounters with them for thousands of years. Some theories propose that these entities might not be physical beings from distant planets, but instead interdimensional beings that can traverse different realms of existence. Another hypothesis suggests that they could be time travelers from the future, using advanced technology to interact with earlier eras of human history. As of right now, it's important to note that more evidence is needed to prove their existence. However, as technology moves forward, perhaps we are closer than what we realize to providing conclusive evidence of the authenticity of these entities. Popocatepetl, the majestic and active stratovolcano located in Mexico, has long held a place of reverence in indigenous cultures and captivated the imagination of locals and tourists alike. However, in recent decades, it has become a hotspot for another kind of phenomenon that defies easy explanation, the frequent sightings of unidentified objects above its peaks. Anonymous have just posted an interesting video showing mysterious objects flying in and out of the volcano.
The volcano's unique geological characteristics could play a role in the prevalence of mysterious sightings. With an elevation of over 5,400 meters, its towering presence pierces through the clouds and becomes an ideal vantage point for skyward observations. The volcanic activity, including eruptions and emissions of gases, could create unusual atmospheric phenomena that could be misinterpreted as unidentified objects. Light reflections from the volcano's activity and clouds might also contribute to optical illusions, further complicating the distinction between natural occurrences and extraordinary sightings. However, many who have witnessed these objects have said that they have the ability to hover motionless and fly directly into the volcano, something that hasn't been documented with natural occurrences. Indigenous cultures in the region have revered the volcano as a sacred entity for centuries. It is intricately woven into mythology, often associated with deities and cosmic significance. The cultural heritage surrounding the volcano could influence local perceptions and interpretations of unusual phenomena. Legends and stories passed down through generations might predispose individuals to attribute extraordinary sightings to mystical or supernatural events, including unidentified objects. In recent years, there has been a notable shift in the reputation of this volcano. While it was once known for its natural beauty and majestic presence, it has now gained attention for something altogether different. Both residents and online observers, who have been monitoring the volcano through webcams, have observed mysterious aircrafts flying directly into the volcano. Numerous reports claim that what is observed near the volcano is not merely ash, but rather peculiar entities and luminous phenomena frequently spotted hovering in the vicinity. Some witnesses even allege that these enigmatic objects are capable of entering and exiting the volcano, further adding to their mysterious nature. The presence of these unexplained lights and unidentified aerial phenomena has intrigued and perplexed many observers. Moreover, the webcam footage has not only captured the mesmerizing sight of meteors hurtling directly into the volcano, but has also revealed instances of multiple meteor occurrences in a single night. This phenomenon, which has left many in awe, is considered to be incredibly rare, defying the slim probabilities of such events taking place consecutively. Consequently, the astonishing footage has prompted users to explore alternative explanations and theories, seeking to unravel the mystery behind this captivating spectacle. The reasons behind the curiosity of these objects towards this particular volcano are still a topic of debate. However, it is worth noting that on multiple occasions throughout the year, peculiar objects have been observed in close proximity to this volcano, which has spurred the creation of intriguing theories regarding why this volcano seems to attract such attention. An in-depth exploration of these theories can shed light on the possible explanations for why this volcano serves as a significant focal point for these mysterious objects. The volcano has garnered significant attention from amateur researchers due to numerous reported sightings. This has led to its classification as a hotspot, as users have observed multiple unidentified objects in the vicinity of the volcano. It's worth noting that these observations are merely a fraction of the total sightings, as they represent only the instances captured on camera. The frequency and volume of these unusual objects have piqued the curiosity of researchers prompting a comprehensive exploration of this phenomenon. In-depth investigations are underway to unravel the mystery surrounding these sightings and understand the nature of these enigmatic objects. Residents residing in close proximity to the area have reported frequent sightings of luminous lights in the vicinity of the volcano. This phenomenon has intrigued the residents, as it appears that these lights possess a peculiar fascination with the volcano itself. Interestingly, these sightings are not limited to the immediate vicinity of the volcanic area. Photographic evidence has revealed that these mysterious lights also traverse in and out of the volcano. This intriguing observation raises questions about the nature and purpose of these lights, leaving researchers and locals alike wondering about their origin and significance. Glowing orbs, frequently captured on webcams, 
are commonly observed objects that have gained significant attention worldwide. They are widely regarded as one of the most frequently reported mysterious flying objects. These ethereal spheres pose a considerable challenge to photograph as they manifest as mere luminous smudges when captured on camera. Their elusive and enigmatic nature has intrigued people from various cultures and regions around the globe, sparking a sense of curiosity and fascination. As of right now, amateur researchers have questioned whether these unidentified objects are interested in volcanoes. The skies above Earth have long been the canvas for mysterious phenomena, none more captivating than unidentified objects. These enigmatic aerial apparitions have been reported in various contexts and locales, sparking curiosity and speculation. One particularly intriguing scenario involves unidentified objects, allegedly showing interest in volcanoes. Volcanoes are geological marvels, releasing immense energy from the Earth's depths. Some theories speculate that mysterious objects could be harnessing this energy for their own purposes. Volcanic activity generates high levels of thermal energy, electromagnetic fields, and even plasma discharges, elements that might hold significance for advanced civilizations. It's conceivable that unidentified objects could be utilizing these powerful energy sources for propulsion, communication, or other technological functions beyond our comprehension. Volcanic landscapes on Earth are abundant with unique mineral formations and geological structures. Advanced visitors might be interested in studying or extracting these resources, which could have properties or applications unexplored by human science. This could include elements used in advanced technology, rare minerals or materials that hold intrinsic value in interstellar trade or research. These mysterious objects could be engaged in scientific exploration and observation of Earth's geological processes. Volcanoes are dynamic natural laboratories, offering insights into planetary formation and tectonic activity. For a technologically advanced civilization, observing and studying Earth's geological phenomena could contribute to their understanding of planetary evolution and even help them predict natural disasters. Speculative theories propose that unidentified objects might be using volcanoes as entry points into Earth's interior. The complex network of underground tunnels and chambers created by volcanic activity could provide covert access for advanced spacecraft. Volcanic regions could offer hidden bases, shielded from human detection and accessible through natural openings created by lava flows. Volcanic areas possess immense geothermal energy potential. These aircrafts might be tapping into this energy source for various purposes, from recharging their craft to powering advanced technologies. The abundance of geothermal heat could be harnessed through advanced energy conversion methods, aligning with the sustainability principles of an advanced civilization. A photograph was taken by a man in India after he was chased by a massive creature that underwent a transformation. The man in question provided details about the event and said that while walking home, he encountered a mysterious creature. After slowly approaching it in order to get a better look, he said that he noticed that something was off and that the creature didn't look like anything that he'd seen before. Oddly enough, strange reports have been coming out of India for years now, with many of these eyewitnesses describing strange creatures that don't match humans or any other creature native to the area. For this reason, many locals have started to lock their doors at night and have refused to walk out in the street when it's dark in fear that they might encounter one of these creatures. Although blurry photographs have been taken, what this creature is and what it wants remains a mystery. One user speculated that India has its own version of the skinwalker, a creature known to stand over six feet in height and possess the ability to shapeshift into any creature it wishes. The reason that researchers have come to this conclusion is because these reports match those that come from the United States, with the majority of those who've seen this creature saying that it's humanoid and tries to draw you away from people. Skinwalkers are creatures of Navajo mythology that are said to possess supernatural abilities, primarily the ability to shapeshift. They are believed to be humans who have gained the ability to transform into animals, although the transformation can also occur through possession or magic. Skinwalkers are considered to be powerful, dangerous and malevolent beings that should be avoided at all costs. The Navajo people of the southwestern United States have long held beliefs in skinwalkers, and their stories and legends have been passed down for generations. 
Skinwalkers are said to have the ability to transform into a variety of animals, including wolves, coyotes, foxes, bears, and birds. They are said to be able to use this ability to move about undetected and to cause harm to their enemies. One of the most common ways that skinwalkers are said to cause harm is by mimicking the cries of infants or animals, causing their victims to leave the safety of their homes to investigate. Once the victim is outside, the skinwalker is said to attack, with native elders saying that the creatures will often stalk its prey, ensuring that it is at its weakest before it approaches. Skinwalkers are also believed to have the ability to control the thoughts and actions of others and to possess people and animals. The origins of skinwalker beliefs are unclear, but they are thought to have originated from the Navajo people's long-standing reverence for nature and the power of the natural world. The Navajo people have always believed in a variety of supernatural beings, and skinwalkers are just one of many. The belief in skinwalkers is so deeply ingrained in Navajo culture that it is considered taboo to even speak of them openly. While some dismiss the idea of skinwalkers as nothing more than a myth or legend, others believe that they are very real and that encounters with them are not uncommon. There have been numerous reports of strange encounters in the southwestern United States that are attributed to skinwalkers, including sightings of mysterious creatures, unexplained noises, and even attacks on humans and livestock. Despite the fact that many people believe in the existence of skinwalkers, there is little scientific evidence to support their existence. Many of the reports of skinwalker encounters can be attributed to misidentification of animals or other natural phenomena, or to the power of suggestion. However, the fact that skinwalker beliefs continue to be held by many Navajo people suggests that there may be some truth to the stories and legends that surround these mysterious beings. In recent years, skinwalkers have gained a degree of popularity in popular culture, appearing in books, movies and television shows. While these portrayals are often highly sensationalized and bear little resemblance to the beliefs and traditions of the Navajo people, they have helped to raise awareness of skinwalkers and to bring attention to the unique mythology and beliefs of this fascinating culture. As of right now, skinwalkers are a fascinating and mysterious aspect of Navajo mythology that have captivated people's imaginations for generations. There's many who suggest that there may be more to them than just myth and legend, with witnesses across the world reporting encounters with large humanoids. Another creature that some have said could be responsible is that of the Wendigo. The Wendigo is a mythical creature from Native American folklore that is said to inhabit the forests and wilderness of the northern United States and Canada. It is often described as a humanoid creature with deer-like antlers, long arms, and a gaunt, emaciated appearance. The Wendigo is known for its insatiable hunger for human flesh and is believed to be a malevolent spirit that preys on travelers and hunters who become lost in the wilderness. The legend of the Wendigo has been passed down through generations of Native American communities and has also been incorporated into popular culture. It has been the subject of countless horror movies, books and video games, often depicted as a terrifying monster that hunts unsuspecting victims. While the existence of the Wendigo is not scientifically proven, the legend has persisted for centuries and continues to fascinate and terrify people to this day. Many believe that the legend serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of isolation and the consequences of giving in to one's most primal urges. Despite its dark reputation, the Wendigo remains an important part of Native American mythology and a fascinating piece of folklore. Its haunting presence in the wilderness serves as a reminder of the power of the natural world and the dangers that lurk in the unknown. Whether real or imagined, the legend of the Wendigo continues to captivate and scare us, reminding us of the mysteries that still exist in the world around us. The first recorded story of the Wendigo dates back to the 1600s and comes from the Algonquian-speaking Cree tribe of present-day Canada. The story tells of a warrior named Swift Runner who was known for his skill in hunting and fishing. In the winter of 1878, Swift Runner and his family became trapped in a remote area of the woods due to heavy snowfall. They ran out of food, and the cold and hunger began to take its toll on them. In desperation, Swift Runner ate his wife and five children. When he finally made it to the Hudson Bay Company trading post, he claimed that his family had passed away due to lack of food. 
However, he soon confessed to what had happened and was arrested and tried for the crime. The story of Swift Runner's crimes became legendary among the Cree people, who believed that his actions had invited the wrath of the Wendigo. A few years back, a mysterious object could be seen opening up in the sky above Russia. The man who captured the footage said that an object could be seen forming in the sky, and then detailed that the object emitted a bright light, after which a smaller object could be seen flying out of it. The bizarre encounter left the man confused about what he had just witnessed, and in order to show his friends what he had seen, he decided to take some photographs, so that he could analyze them at a later date. The man said that the object on the left was emitting a bright light, and that a smaller dark object could be seen inside it, describing it as looking like a large orb that was dark in color. As he watched the event unfold, he said that it made no noise and didn't match a plane or a helicopter, saying that he couldn't explain how the smaller, darker object flew out of the initial object. When the photographs were shared online, people gave their opinions on what they thought it could be. Suggestions ranged from rocket launches to mysterious aircrafts. Oddly enough, there weren't any launches in the area at the time of the encounter, which caused the eyewitness to suggest that it belonged to something unknown. Another user suggested that it was a wormhole, or that the man had witnessed a rare atmospheric phenomena. Interestingly, around the same time, it was reported that fighter jets had been scrambled throughout the area, and some of these reports have come from military officials and pilots themselves. For example, in 2012, a Russian fighter jet was scrambled to investigate a mysterious aircraft that had been detected on radar. The pilot reported that the object was a glowing orb that was moving at an incredible speed. The pilot attempted to intercept the object, but it disappeared before he could get close. In 2017, Russian media reported that jets had been scrambled to intercept several mysterious aircrafts that had been detected over the Black Sea. The reports claimed that the objects were moving at incredible speeds and were able to evade the fighter jets. There have also been reports of military officials investigating mysterious aircrafts. In 2014, the Russian Ministry of Defense launched a special department to investigate these sightings. The department is staffed by military officials and scientists and is tasked with investigating any sightings that are reported. One of the most famous incidents of a Russian fighter jet encountering a mysterious object occurred in 1989. A Soviet MiG-29 fighter jet was scrambled to investigate a strange aircraft that had been detected on radar. The pilot reported that he had encountered a large, saucer-shaped object that was emitting a bright light. The object was able to evade the fighter jet and disappeared before any further investigation could be conducted. These incidents have raised questions about whether the Russian government has knowledge of or involvement with these objects. Some theorists have suggested that the government has made contact with advanced beings and is working with them in secret, but as of right now, officials deny these claims and have said that the majority of these sightings can be explained. However, some fighter jet pilots have admitted that these aircrafts do have the ability to outmaneuver them, which has led to a series of questions being put forward by the general public. As of right now, while there have been reports of Russian fighter jets being scrambled to investigate these mysterious objects, officials have said that there is no concrete evidence to support the claims that these aircrafts belong to anything advanced. Interestingly, these mysterious orbs, also known as Foo Fighters, are a type of unidentified object that are typically described as small, glowing spheres of light. They have been reported by pilots, astronauts, and even everyday people for decades, with sightings dating back to World War II. One of the most famous cases of these orb sightings occurred during World War II, when Allied pilots reported seeing strange, glowing objects flying alongside their planes detailing that it was almost as if these mysterious objects were inspecting their planes and said that before they could fly towards them, they would shoot off at incredible speeds. These objects were dubbed Foo Fighters by the pilots, and their presence was often unnerving and mysterious, with many pilots detailing that they had no idea what they were. Some pilots reported that the orbs would follow their planes for long periods of time, performing aerial maneuvers that were beyond the capabilities of any known aircraft. In more recent times, 
These orb sightings have continued to occur, with many witnesses reporting seeing glowing spheres of light in the sky. These orbs have been described as being anywhere from the size of a basketball to as small as a golf ball, and they often appear to move in an intelligent and deliberate manner. Despite the prevalence of orb sightings, there is still much debate among scientists and researchers about what these objects could be. Some believe that they are simply natural phenomena, such as ball lightning or other types of atmospheric anomalies. However, others suggest that they may be evidence of advanced activity. One theory is that these orbs are actually some type of advanced drone technology, developed by either a government or private organization. It is possible that these drones are being used for surveillance purposes, or even for military operations, and interestingly, they have been observed in areas with high security, leading some researchers to speculate whether an unknown group is responsible for them. Another possibility is that these orbs are indeed extraterrestrial in origin, and that they represent some type of reconnaissance or exploration mission. If this is the case, then it is possible that these orbs could be controlled remotely by an advanced civilization or that they are being piloted by some type of artificial intelligence. As of right now, orb sightings continue to fascinate and mystify people around the world. While some dismiss these reports as mere hoaxes or misidentifications, others believe that they represent evidence of something truly extraordinary. Those who investigate these sightings have said that orb sightings are one of the most commonly reported aircraft and over the years, pilots and eyewitnesses have been left confused by their sightings, saying that these mysterious objects have no visible propulsion system and are completely silent. One mystery is that every time these objects are photographed, they appear blurry, leading some researchers to say that these aircrafts might have the ability to interfere with electronics, which could explain why it's so difficult to capture them on camera. As of right now, what they are, how they are able to achieve what they do, and who they belong to remains a mystery. This photo gained widespread attention several years back, as numerous individuals shared it on social media and asserted that it had been taken by a trail camera somewhere in the United States. The story goes that a landowner constantly heard strange sounds on their property during the night, and the noises were unlike any of the animals typically found in the area. The man didn't think much of the sounds until around two days later, when he heard one of his goats emitting a loud, high-pitched scream. This prompted him to quickly leave his house and make his way down to where the animals were kept. But once there, he couldn't find his livestock anywhere. As he strolled across his land, he noticed the presence of sizable paw prints scattered throughout the vicinity where he kept his goats. He quickly deduced that some creature was seeking to satisfy its hunger. Due to the goats being in an open area, he was unable to relocate them. Each morning, he would find his once thriving livestock in disarray, chickens missing, cows agitated, and strange tracks in the mud that seemed too large for any known animal. Concerned for his livestock, he decided to take action. One night, he stayed awake, keeping watch over his farm. As the day turned to night, he heard a low growl in the distance and although the sound made him nervous, he knew he had to confront whatever lurked in the shadows. With a light in hand, he ventured into the darkness. The moon's light barely penetrated the thick canopy of trees, leaving him to rely on the dim glow of his torch to guide him. He followed the chilling howls, which seemed to grow louder with each step. As he approached the edge of the forest, the hairs on the back of his neck stood on end. Fear washed over him, but he stood his ground, determined to protect his animals. The creature didn't come out from the forest, but he was determined to capture it. The farmer set up a trail camera close to his livestock, knowing that once the creature approached, it would set off the trail camera's sensor. After setting up the camera, and patiently waiting for several nights, a similar incident occurred where one of the goats was taken. But this time the trail camera successfully recorded something. After examining it, he was puzzled about what type of creature this was. He initially thought that it was a wolf, but those who saw it suggested that it could have been a dogman. Despite the controversy surrounding its authenticity, those who have viewed the image firmly believe it to be one of the clearest depictions of the dogman to date. The mysterious dogman, often described as a canine-like humanoid, 
has captured the imaginations of people worldwide, inspiring tales of fear and fascination. The roots of the Dogman legend can be traced back to ancient civilizations that held beliefs in shape-shifting creatures. In various cultures, tales of half-human, half-animal beings have persisted throughout history. The concept of a canine-human hybrid can be found in folklore, mythology, and religious traditions in different parts of the world. In modern times, the Dogman legend gained prominence in North America, particularly in the upper Midwest region of the United States, where numerous reported sightings have been recorded. Michigan, in particular, has become a hotbed for Dogman stories, with its own unique twist on the legend. Descriptions of the Dogman vary, but common elements include a creature with the body of a man and the head of a wolf or dog. Witnesses often recount encounters with a tall, bipedal creature, covered in fur and possessing powerful canine features, such as sharp teeth and glowing eyes. Sightings of the Dogman have been reported in rural and wooded areas, where it is said to roam in the darkness, striking fear into the hearts of those who cross its path. Witnesses speak of the creature's speed, agility, and eerie ability to disappear into the shadows. The Dogman has become a cultural icon, inspiring a vast array of artistic representations, music, literature, and films. From campfire tales to best-selling novels, the legend has permeated popular culture, capturing the imagination of generations. One reason for the Dogman's appeal is its association with primal fears and archetypal symbols. The wolf, as a predator and symbol of the untamed wilderness, has long held a place in human mythology and psyche. The Dogman embodies our age-old fascination with the mysteries of the wild and the blurred boundary between the human and animal realms. The study of animals whose existence has not been proven often investigates the claims of dogman sightings. While some researchers remain open-minded, others approach the subject with skepticism, attributing sightings to misidentifications of known animals, hoaxes or hallucinations. The lack of verifiable evidence, such as clear photographs or physical remains, raises doubts among mainstream scientists and biologists. The dogman's mythological status and lack of scientific evidence contribute to the controversy surrounding its existence. The power of folklore lies in its ability to shape perceptions and beliefs. Cultural influences, such as media portrayals and urban legends, play a significant role in perpetuating the dogman legend. Stories of unexplained phenomena and mysterious encounters have been passed down through generations, further enhancing the creature's mystique. Beyond its mysterious nature, the Dogman has also been interpreted as a symbol of the unknown and the untamed aspects of human nature. It represents our primal instincts, our connection to the natural world, and the mysteries that lie beyond our understanding. There exists a fascinating chronicle of recorded sightings that spans different regions and cultures. One of the most famous and well-documented cases of dogman sightings originates from the state of Michigan in the United States. The legend of the Michigan Dogman gained prominence in the late 1980s, when a popular radio jingle describing the creature became a cultural phenomenon. However, long before the radio jingle, there were reports of encounters with a similar creature in the area. Sightings of the Michigan Dogman have been reported across the state, particularly in rural and wooded regions. Witnesses often describe a tall, bipedal creature with canine features, sharp teeth, and glowing eyes. The creature is said to possess incredible speed and agility, making it challenging to capture evidence of its existence. In southeastern Wisconsin, a creature known as the Beast of Bray Road has garnered attention for its resemblance to the Dogman. Sightings of this creature date back to the 1980s and continue to be reported to this day. Witnesses describe a wolf-like being, standing upright on two legs, often observed crossing roads or peering into windows of houses. The Beast of Bray Road has sparked considerable interest among paranormal investigators, leading to numerous investigations and documentaries exploring the legend. The legend of the Dogman is not confined to modern sightings alone, it has deep roots in Native American folklore. Various indigenous tribes across North America have their own accounts of similar creatures often regarded as guardians of the wilderness or protectors of sacred sites. These stories, passed down through generations, 
offer a unique cultural perspective on the enduring myth of the dogman. Beyond North America, accounts of encounters with similar creatures can be found in other parts of the world. In Europe, for example, legends of werewolves and shapeshifters bear similarities to the dogman lore. While skeptics argue that these sightings are products of cultural influence and psychological factors, believers point to the consistency of descriptions and the sheer number of reported encounters as evidence of the creature's existence. Deep in the heart of southeastern Wisconsin, a chilling legend has captured the imaginations of locals and intrigued cryptid enthusiasts for decades, the Beast of Bray Road. The legend of the Beast of Bray Road finds its roots in rural Wisconsin, with the small town of Elkhorn at its epicenter. In the late 1980s, reports began to emerge of an unusual creature roaming the rural countryside, particularly along Bray Road, a desolate stretch flanked by dense forests and farmland. The legend was popularized by a newspaper article written by Linda Godfrey, a local journalist, in 1991. In her article, Godfrey recounted multiple sightings of a werewolf-like creature reported by residents in the area. This article acted as a catalyst, drawing attention to the cryptid and solidifying its place in American folklore. Witnesses to the Beast of Bray Road describe a creature standing between five and seven feet tall, covered in thick, dark fur, with the face and head resembling that of a wolf. The creature is said to possess glowing amber eyes and powerful clawed hands. Many of the reported sightings describe the beast walking on two legs, a characteristic shared with other mysterious creatures, such as the Dogman and the infamous Michigan Dogman. Some witnesses claim to have observed the beast on all fours, running with incredible speed and agility. One of the earliest documented sightings of the beast dates back to 1936, when a young man named Mark Shackleman reported an encounter with a werewolf on Bray Road. Shackleman's account remained obscure until the 1980s, when Godfrey's article brought renewed interest to the legend. In the 1990s, several other residents stepped forward with their own encounters, further fueling the mystery. Some witnesses claimed to have seen the beast crossing the road, while others spoke of eerie howls and unexplained sounds emanating from the surrounding woods. The notoriety of the Beast of Bray Road prompted investigations from enthusiasts. Linda Godfrey herself took an active interest in the creature and conducted extensive research, documenting numerous reports and exploring potential explanations for the sightings. Various theories have been put forth to explain the beast's existence. Some researchers suggest that the sightings could be misidentifications of known animals, such as wolves or large dogs. Others propose the idea of a previously unknown species, a surviving relic of prehistoric times or even a shape-shifting entity. The Beast of Bray Road has left a lasting impact on the culture of southeastern Wisconsin. The legend has become a part of local folklore, inspiring books, documentaries and community events centered around the creature. The Beast's influence extends beyond the region, featuring in pop culture references, TV shows and movies. The legend of the Beast of Bray Road continues to attract enthusiasts and tourists to the area, hoping for a glimpse of the elusive creature or seeking to explore the lore that surrounds it. Psychologists and sociologists offer intriguing insights into the phenomenon of sightings, including the Beast of Bray Road. Some argue that folklore and urban legends can act as collective expressions of societal fears and anxieties. As of right now, the Beast of Bray Road remains an enduring enigma in American folklore. With a history spanning decades and numerous reported sightings, the legend has become deeply embedded in local culture and the broader community. While skeptics question the existence of the beast and attribute sightings to misidentifications or imagination, the allure of the unknown continues to captivate the human mind. The Beast of Bray Road represents an enduring fascination with cryptids and a testament to the timeless appeal of mystery and wonder in our world. As long as the legend persists, the Beast of Bray Road will continue to haunt the collective consciousness of southeastern Wisconsin and serve as a reminder of the enduring allure of the unknown. Whether the beast is a product of folklore, a genuine cryptid, or something else entirely, its legend has etched itself into the annals of American folklore, a testament to the unyielding desire to explore the unexplained in the human psyche. 
The mysterious world of unidentified objects has long captivated the human imagination, sparking debates and speculation about potential visitations and advanced technologies. Anonymous is a loosely organized online collective of activists, hackers and individuals who seek to promote various causes through online actions and hacktivism. The group is composed of individuals who remain anonymous, often using pseudonyms or masks, to avoid identification. While Anonymous is not an official organization with a central leadership structure, its members collaborate through internet forums, encrypted channels, and social media platforms. Anonymous's interest in unidentified object sightings stems from its commitment to exploring mysteries and uncovering hidden truths. Many members of the collective share a fascination with unexplained phenomena and feel that mainstream institutions often overlook or dismiss legitimate sightings. Anonymous investigates mysterious sightings through a crowdsourced approach. Members collaborate to collect and analyze eyewitness testimonies, photographs, videos and other pieces of evidence related to unidentified sightings. Online platforms, such as the anonymous message board and social media channels, serve as conduits for sharing and discussing related information. The collective encourages whistleblowers and witnesses to come forward anonymously, as their safety and privacy are paramount. After the recent UAP hearing, Anonymous commented that we should explore the Vatican's archives. The Vatican Archives, located within the Vatican City, is one of the world's most enigmatic and closely guarded repositories of historical documents. Spanning over 12 centuries, the archives house an extensive collection of manuscripts, papal bulls, correspondence, and other valuable materials from various periods of history. There is increasing pressure on the Vatican to disclose any information regarding its awareness of the retrieval of an unidentified object in Italy during the 1930s. This comes amidst numerous allegations surrounding the United States government's knowledge and management of interactions with advanced life. David Grush, a former employee of the National Reconnaissance Office and a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, asserted in a June interview that an unidentified object was discovered near Milan in 1933 and later came under the possession of the United States, with assistance from the Papal State. One of the individuals who provided testimony to the House Oversight Committee was referred to as the whistleblower. During the hearing, he reiterated his previous assertion that the US government has possessed knowledge of non-human actions dating back to the 1930s. The Department of Defense and NASA have publicly emphasized that they lack any evidence of extraterrestrial existence or a government initiative to analyze advanced materials. During the interview, he asserted that during the reign of the fascist leader Benito Mussolini, the Italian government obtained an unidentified object and relocated it to a protected airbase for the duration of his rule. Grush claimed that former Pope Pius XII possessed secret information about the unidentified object, which was later acquired by the United States. When directly inquired about whether he was suggesting that the Catholic Church had knowledge of advanced life, Grush replied affirmatively. News outlets reported that it had been making efforts for a week to obtain a public statement from the Vatican on the issue at hand. Unfortunately, they have not received a response yet. Ross Coulthart, a journalist who spoke with Grush before the congressional hearing, shared with news networks that he had received confirmation of the story from other undisclosed sources. He also speculated that the Vatican's lack of response could potentially indicate the credibility of the claim. It presents a challenging dilemma for the Vatican as it confronts Mr. Grush's claims, which appear to be accurate according to Ross Coulthart's sources. Admitting such allegations without the agreement of the United States would pose significant difficulties for the Vatican. The existence of advanced life presents a nuanced theological dilemma for the Catholic Church. According to Catholic doctrine, humans were intentionally created as intelligent beings by God and maintain a unique relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. However, this viewpoint does not exclude the possibility that another intelligent life form could also have a similar connection with God. In 2008, Father Jose Funes, a Jesuit who was serving as the director of the Vatican Observatory at the time, stated to the official newspaper of the Vatican that he believed faith and the existence of extraterrestrial brothers were not in conflict with one another. 
Drawing on the Vatican's historical trial of Galileo as a heretic for his belief in a heliocentric universe, it is remarkable to see the progress the Vatican has made in embracing science over the past four centuries. Coulthart mentioned having a conversation with an individual who had been given permission to access the vast underground archives of the Vatican. These archives consist of 50 miles of shelving, and Coulthart hinted that certain documents supporting Grush's assertions might be discovered there, but only a privileged few are allowed entry. According to a statement from DOD spokesperson Sue Guff, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office has found no credible evidence to support the assertions that there have been, or currently are, any programs related to the acquisition or reverse engineering of advanced materials. The Department of Defense acknowledges the significance of public interest in unidentified aerial phenomena, and she said that the DOD is fully dedicated to transparency and responsibility towards the American public, while also recognizing the need to safeguard sensitive information, sources, and methodologies. Despite the claims made in the testimony of witnesses, scientists who possess knowledge in the field of advanced life have maintained a skeptical stance. However, they haven't completely dismissed the possibility and are willing to consider it further, although they emphasize the absence of substantial evidence presented during the hearing. The Vatican Archives houses an unparalleled collection of documents, stretching back to the 8th century. The vast holdings include papal bulls, conciliar decrees, apostolic letters, and other official communications from various popes throughout history. These documents provide insights into religious, political, cultural, and social aspects of past centuries, making the Vatican archives a crucial resource for historical research. Additionally, the archives contain diplomatic correspondence, records of past conclaves, and documents pertaining to the Vatican's relationship with various countries. As a result, the archives serve not only as a testament to the history of the Roman Catholic Church, but also as a source of information on the broader historical and geopolitical landscape of Europe and beyond. For centuries, the Vatican archives maintained a reputation for secrecy and limited access. Only a select few Vatican officials had permission to enter, and access to specific documents was heavily restricted. This approach to secrecy raised intrigue and speculation about the archives' hidden contents, fueling numerous theories over the years. Despite the opening of certain sections of the archives, the Vatican archives still hold an air of mystery, shrouded in speculation about hidden secrets and controversial historical records. Some of the most intriguing questions involve the potential existence of documents related to the Knights Templar and the Inquisition. Theories surrounding the Vatican archives have flourished in popular culture and literature. However, it is essential to distinguish between reality and fiction, as the archives are not a secretive organization with malicious intentions. The majority of the contents are historical and religious in nature, offering valuable insights into the history of the Catholic Church and the broader world. In the remote high desert of Utah, near a place known as Skinwalker Ranch, a man named James took a hike through the hills. James describes himself as a curious man. He'd heard the legends of Skinwalker Ranch and the mystical creatures that supposedly roamed there. But he was skeptical, a man who believed only in what he could see or touch. That was until he found himself face to face with the inexplicable. It began like any other day, with the air biting at his face and the soft rustle of the desert wind. James was following his usual trail, one that skirted the infamous ranch where countless stories of strange occurrences and sightings of otherworldly beings had originated. As he approached a ridge overlooking a dark valley, he suddenly felt a chill, unlike any he had ever experienced. The day had fallen silent, the wind ceased, and the very air seemed to thicken. Then he heard it, a faint whisper, like a raspy voice carried on the wind. He looked down into the valley and saw a shadowy figure moving on all fours, its eyes glowing with a sickly yellow light. James's heart pounded in his chest, but he couldn't look away. He watched as the creature stopped and raised its head, sniffing the air. Its body was lean and twisted, covered with what looked like mottled, rotting skin. Its face was a horrifying amalgamation of human and animal features. Suddenly it stood on its hind legs, its eyes fixed on James. He felt a cold terror grip him as those eyes bore into him, 
seeming to look right into his soul. It was as if the creature knew him, knew his thoughts, his doubts, his fears. Unable to move, unable to even breathe, James could only watch as the creature began to change. Its body twisted and contorted, its skin stretching and reshaping. The creature was now making its way towards him, its lips curling into a malicious grin. It spoke in a voice that was a distorted echo of James's own. With that, the creature turned and vanished into the darkness, leaving James frozen on the ridge, his mind reeling from what he had just witnessed. He stumbled back to his car and drove home in a daze. The image of that creature, that skinwalker, burned into his mind. He knew now that the legends were true, that there was a world beyond what he could see or touch, a world filled with mysteries and horrors beyond comprehension. Days turned into weeks, and James found himself drawn back to that ridge, night after night, as if the skinwalker had left a part of itself in him. He would stand there, looking into the valley, half hoping, half fearing to see it again, but the creature never returned, and slowly, the terror of that encounter began to fade, becoming a haunting memory. James was left with more questions than answers, a changed man who had peered into the unknown and had been forever marked by it. In the vast expanse of the Winter Basin in northeastern Utah, there lies a place shrouded in enigma and wonder, Skinwalker Ranch. Also known as Sherman Ranch, this 480-acre property has earned a reputation as one of the most paranormal hotspots in the world, captivating the imaginations of enthusiasts, researchers, and skeptics alike. Its eerie tales of strange phenomena have made it a subject of intense curiosity and debate, attracting countless investigations and becoming a focal point for those seeking to understand the mysteries of the unknown. The legend of Skinwalker Ranch dates back centuries to the native Ute tribe, who considered the land to be cursed. According to tribal lore, the area was inhabited by malevolent shapeshifters, known as skinwalkers, capable of transforming into animals and inflicting harm on humans. With such a sinister backdrop, it's no wonder that the ranch has become a magnet for all things paranormal. The modern era of intrigue surrounding Skinwalker Ranch began in the 1990s when it was purchased by a Las Vegas businessman named Robert Bigelow, founder of the National Institute for Discovery Science. Under Bigelow's ownership, the ranch became a focal point for extensive scientific research and investigations into a wide range of unexplained phenomena. Witnesses have reported a plethora of inexplicable events at the ranch, from mysterious unidentified aircraft sightings and encounters with otherworldly beings, to poltergeist-like activity, crop circles, and unexplained animal explorations. Among the most common sightings are strange lights in the sky, moving erratically and defying conventional explanations. Some have described seeing disc-shaped objects hovering in the distance, while others claim to have witnessed craft vanishing into thin air or submerging into the ground. These accounts have fueled speculation about mysterious visitations. One of the most compelling aspects of Skinwalker Ranch is the high number of witnesses who are credible and experienced, such as law enforcement officers, military personnel, and scientists. Their testimonies lend weight to the idea that something genuinely unusual may be occurring on the property. However, Skeptics argue that many of these accounts can be attributed to natural phenomena, misidentifications, or exaggerations. The phenomenon at Skinwalker Ranch also extends beyond the skies, with numerous reports of eerie and unexplained occurrences on the ground. Witnesses have claimed to see shadowy figures lurking in the darkness, hearing disembodied voices, and experiencing feelings of being watched or followed. Some have described encounters with strange, wolf-like creatures, reinforcing the legends of the malevolent skinwalkers. Various scientific investigations have been conducted at the ranch to try and unravel its mysteries. The National Institute for Discovery Science, under Bigelow's direction, spent years collecting data, setting up surveillance equipment, and conducting studies to document and understand the strange occurrences. Critics argue that the lack of publicly available scientific data and the selective release of information have cast doubts on the legitimacy of the research conducted at Skinwalker Ranch. In 2016, the ownership of the ranch changed hands again, with real estate mogul Brandon Fugel acquiring the property. However, 
Fugel took a more secretive approach, limiting access to the site and keeping a tight lid on ongoing investigations. Brandon Fugel is not just the owner, but also the executive producer of the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. This move has only intensified the aura of mystery surrounding the ranch. Deep within the heart of Navajo folklore lies a chilling tale that continues to send shivers down the spines of those who hear it, the legend of the Skinwalker. In the Native American tradition, the Skinwalker is a malevolent witch capable of shape-shifting into animals and harnessing dark powers to inflict harm on others. This haunting legend has endured for generations, serving as a cautionary tale and a source of fear and fascination. According to Navajo beliefs, the Skinwalker is a powerful practitioner of the witchery way, an ancient and forbidden form of magic. It is said that these individuals, usually witches or shamans who have chosen the path of darkness, can transform into any animal of their choosing. From wolves to owls, bears to coyotes, the Skinwalker can assume the form of the animal they desire, granting them supernatural abilities and enabling them to wreak havoc upon their victims. The methods used by a skinwalker to achieve their shape-shifting abilities are deeply disturbing. Legend has it that they may don the pelts of the animals they wish to become, a process that requires a sinister ritual and unspeakable acts. By wearing the skin of the animal, they are believed to gain not only its physical form, but also its traits and attributes. This transformation allows them to move with stealth and strike fear into the hearts of those who dare cross their path. The powers of a skinwalker extend beyond shapeshifting. They are believed to possess a range of dark abilities. Some tales describe them as being able to control the minds of their victims, causing them to fall ill or suffer from unexplainable ailments. Others speak of their ability to curse people, livestock or crops, bringing misfortune and despair to those who incur their wrath. The origins of the skinwalker legend are rooted in a mix of cultural beliefs and historical events. The concept of shapeshifting is prevalent in numerous indigenous cultures around the world, often linked to spiritual practices and a deep connection to nature. For the Navajo, the concept of witchcraft and witches has been a part of their traditions for centuries, and stories of malevolent practitioners have been passed down through generations. The fear of encountering a skinwalker has been deeply ingrained in Navajo culture, leading to various precautions and rituals to protect against their malevolence. Navajo people avoid discussing skinwalkers at night, believing that speaking their name can attract their attention. Additionally, some believe that the power of the skinwalker lies in their eyes, and meeting their gaze can be a dangerous and even deadly encounter. It is important to note that the skinwalker legend is deeply respected within the Navajo community, and many individuals are reluctant to speak openly about it with outsiders. The legend is treated with reverence, and sharing stories about skinwalkers is often considered taboo, reinforcing the belief in their potency and power. In recent years, the legend of the skinwalker has transcended traditional storytelling and found its way into contemporary culture. The allure of the supernatural and the mysterious has led to various books, movies and documentaries exploring the myth and its origins. However, it is crucial to approach the subject with sensitivity and respect recognizing its cultural significance and understanding that the legend holds deep meaning for the Navajo people. All across the world, there are reports of impossible to explain flying disc-shaped aircraft that demonstrate capabilities that violate all known laws of physics and appear to be technologically far too advanced to be explained in the modern day. In fact, there are more than 8,000 annual cases of sightings of such craft every single year, with thousands more going unreported for fear of ridicule. These sightings, however, are not the most extraordinary stories surrounding these impossible-to-explain craft, but rather the peculiar forms of life that seem to inhabit them. Often described as humanoid, the pilots of these craft vary from all shapes, sizes, species and behaviours, from small, three-foot-tall little grey men to ten-foot-tall Sasquatch-like creatures to lanky, seven-foot-tall insect-like creatures that look eerily similar to the praying mantis. Although UFO and alien enthusiasts have often been quick to proclaim that such sightings and encounters are evidence of extraterrestrial life visiting from faraway planets and solar systems, 
there appears to be a profound amount of evidence that has been growing over the past several decades, gathered by independent research efforts on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere, that has started to chip away at these claims and posited a far more terrifying theory. Perhaps these sightings, these craft, and these extraterrestrial sightings are not extraterrestrial at all, but a matter of the interdimensional. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be going over the mystery and evidence gathered at the Skinwalker Ranch and the possible interdimensional technology behind it that has led to mass visitation of our little blue planet. Thank you for watching. Yinta Basin is no stranger to the supernatural, paranormal, or extraterrestrial. In fact, the area is so familiar with the unexplainable that it led to a joint investigation between the privately owned company Bigelow Aerospace and the United States government's military, the Department of Defense. Over a period of about 20 years, a joint investigation was made to uncover the cause of the paranormal, supernatural, and extraterrestrial sightings made across the Yinta Basin and determine whether or not the cause was a threat to national security. This led to the purchasing of a piece of land that would later be referred to as the Skinwalker Ranch, due to the region's massive amount of sightings of a terrifyingly humanoid monster known as the Skinwalker. In his book titled The Hunt for Skinwalker Ranch, co-author George Knapp discusses how the ranch, previously owned by a family known as the Gorman family, appeared to be a focal point of the unexplainable activity, featuring anything from sightings of little grey aliens, Bigfoot, skinwalkers, direwolves, unidentified flying objects and poltergeist activity. Interestingly enough, over the 20 years of investigation, a surprising amount of evidence came forward that would help to explain the previously believed paranormal causes into something far more evident of advanced technologies. As is common with alien abduction stories, many abductees will often claim that evidence of an abduction having taken place is experiencing a dramatic sudden loss of time. A number of witnesses residing within the Yintar Basin have claimed to have suddenly been walking through their house at night only to find themselves staring at the clock and noticing huge chunks of time missing from their memory, with others claiming that while they had been driving, they found themselves parked at the side of the road realizing that they must have been asleep for several hours. What kind of advanced technology, if any, could cause such sudden lapses in time and awareness? During the NIDS's investigation, researchers gathered the witness testimony of the Gorman family, the family that used to reside at the Skinwalker Ranch, and the troubles they faced with the ongoing paranormal and supernatural activity they witnessed. In one such story, the Gormans talked about how their missing cattle had been a devastating blow to their finances and how their last ability to make a profit rested with four 2,000-pound bulls in an iron-gated pen resting a few hundred yards from their home. Almost as if listening in on the conversation, when the couple reached the bull pens, they noticed that all four bulls were missing from their locked pens with no evidence of destruction. After contacting the researchers, the bulls were found crammed into a locked and closed trailer with no way of entering or exiting, with all four of the bulls standing side by side in a perfectly docile mood, seemingly stuck in a hypnotic trance. When the researchers entered the trailer in an attempt to coax the bulls back into the bullpen, almost as if a sudden switch had been flipped, the bulls snapped out of their hypnotic trance and began kicking and breaking the trailer apart in a terrible fit of rage. The researchers were not only unable to explain how the bulls entered inside the trailer, they were unable to explain the strange display of sudden behavior shifts in the bulls that allowed them to have been moved into the trailer in a docile state before the arrival of the team. Despite this lack of explanation from the researchers, however, Unexplained Mysteries proposes a theory as to the cause of the bulls' sudden behavioral shift. Back in 1964, the neurological researcher, Jose Manuel Rodriguez Delgado, later referred to as the pioneer of electrical brain stimulation, conducted a dramatically demonstrated research test that could prove the viability and theory that electrical brain stimulation, when applied in controlled manners, could not only manipulate an organism's muscle movements and contractions, but could more than influence the creature's entire behavior as well. 
Known as the Stymor Seaver, Delgado invented a small device that could be implanted into the brain of an animal and used to give remote-controlled electrical stimulation to specific parts of the brain for controlled behavior. After conducting brain surgery to impact his electrode into the skull of a Spanish bull, the Cerro of Cordoba, Spain, Delgado got into the bullfighting ring with the creature surrounded by a crowd of onlookers and waited for the bull to charge him. When it did, Delgado activated his remote-controlled electrode only a few meters from being hit by the bull, which instantly caused the raging bull to come to an immediate halt. Almost in an exact instant, the bull seemed to lose all of its aggression and violence and laid down in a calm and relaxed demeanor. Just like the docile behavior of the caged bulls on the Skinwalker Ranch, Delgado's bull seemed to become completely oblivious to the presence of Delgado and went into a hypnotic dull state. Could electrical brain stimulation have been the cause for the Skinwalker Ranch bulls suddenly becoming docile and being led into a tight and compacted trailer? Oddly enough, the NIDS's research group found that the iron gate that fenced the bulls in were suddenly completely magnetized around the area. The magnetization of iron was most likely caused from a powerful electromagnetic field in the region of unknown origin. This heavily implies, however, that only moments before the bull's strange personality shift, there was a powerful electromagnetic field that suddenly arose and caused the bulls to undergo a specified and controlled behavior. Rather than the paranormal ability of a poltergeist, a conscious intelligence with advanced technologies capable of creating strong electromagnetic fields could have used such technology to apply specific electrical brain stimulation and lead to the docile hypnosis and control of the skinwalker bulls, just like Delgado's experiments demonstrated more than 60 years ago. Could it be that when individuals experience a sudden loss of time and undergo hypnotic trances shortly before and after an alien abduction event, they could be the victim of an impossible to explain electrical brain stimulation caused by a powerful but direct electromagnetic weapon used by otherworldly beings. Interestingly enough, another recorded story from the Skinwalker Ranch researchers could prove to be a profound piece of supporting evidence for this claim. One of the strangest pieces of supernatural encounters from the Gorman family was that of the instantaneous cattle mutilation that took place no more than about 20 feet away from them as they fed their livestock. According to the Gorman family, their cattle had been in a small field together with a baby calf resting beside its mother as the cows were being fed. Suddenly, the family claimed that the mother cow began bellowing sadly as it ran in circles with a partial limp that seemed to be a form of temporary paralysis. When the family walked to the cow to see what was wrong, they noticed that the calf had been cut open and picked completely clean with a precision that was more akin to surgical tools. In a few seconds, it took them to walk from the calf down the field 20 feet and then back again. When the researchers investigated the mutilation, they found that the hide of the calf was too thick to have been cut by a knife and would have required surgical tools and a large amount of time to have performed the procedure, leaving behind nothing but an untouched head and a skeleton picked completely clean. Although the family claims that next to no time had passed, could the entire area have been under the influence of an electromagnetic field that caused a docile hypnosis and temporary amnesia that led the inhabitants into believing no time had passed while an unknown entity conducted a mutilation experiment in the field unseen. The partial paralysis of the calf's mother seems to support that theory overwhelmingly. There are few known scientific causes of temporary paralysis in individuals, but one of the most well-known causes is that of partial damage to an animal's nervous system or misfiring signals from the brain to the nervous system. Similar to how REM sleep will temporarily cause the body to undergo paralysis to prevent an individual from kicking out in their sleep, could the electromagnetic fields caused by some unknown entity have caused an adverse effect on the mother cow's nervous system that caused it to temporarily enter into a partial limb paralysis when exposed to its radiating field? Countless accounts of extraterrestrial encounters in the past have often remarked that close encounters with alien craft 
have often led to neurological problems. Could this be evidence of a form of neurological control or influence? Often referred to as poltergeist interference, there seems to be a tremendous amount of evidence of time loss, hypnotically induced trance states, sudden amnesia, and controlled electromagnetic fields capable of manipulating an organism's behavior instantaneously. Rather than a paranormal or supernatural cause, the evidence points to a clear use of advanced technologies that can not only control their victims, but can allow the unknown entities to remain unseen while conducting real-time experiments in front of their victims without them knowing it. Interestingly, in the last few months, various people across the world have reported seeing unidentified objects falling slowly to the ground, leaving a large trail of smoke. This in turn has caused eyewitnesses to call police and report that something is in distress. Investigators who arrive on the scene, thinking that it's a plane and that they will need further assistance, are surprised to find nothing in the area to indicate that something was in trouble. One of these objects was recently spotted above England, with footage showing a large object leaving behind a smoke trail. Those who saw it detailed that it looked as though something was on fire and described it as an unidentified object that was dark in colour. One resident by the name of Miss Jeffries was able to capture clear photographs of the incident. She said the following. This is what we captured on the same day and time. We live in Hilperton Trowbridge. We too thought it was an aircraft. But what grabbed our attention was how it was falling vertically straight down at such a slow speed. It was just bizarre. I would love to find out what it was. It was the strangest thing we have ever seen. My friend's husband said the International Space Station crew were docking that day. So perhaps it could be debris from that. There was something so strange about it that we stopped to watch. I didn't want to worry my children so before taking photographs. I just said it could be something amazing falling from space. I think that's why my son didn't seem at all worried. My youngest did come downstairs at bedtime crying because he was frightened not knowing what it was. He calmed down eventually. End quote. Interestingly, other people living close to the area said that they also witnessed it and again described the object as falling slowly but said that they couldn't make out what the object was. A man by the name of Mr. Craddock said that the mysterious object fell for over 20 minutes and that the vapour trail it was giving off was a dark black colour. He said that his friends in London also saw the object. One police officer commented on a post that shared the photograph and said the following. This incident was investigated by officers in the region and although we could see an object falling to the ground, no one came forward to report a crash. Sometimes these objects can be explained away as things like skydivers or even aeroplanes, but in this case, it did look like something was falling to the ground. My family that lives 25 miles away sent me photographs of the event, and I have to admit, I've never seen anything like it before. It was very bizarre. End quote. Shortly after the photographs were released online, a worker from the United Kingdom's aviation unit said that it was most likely a plane, and that due to the angle of it, the object appeared to be falling from the sky. Many didn't buy this explanation, though, and said that for the past few years these strange objects have been reported across countries. Oddly enough, after looking through gathered data, researchers have said that the United Kingdom is a hotspot when it comes to mysterious sightings, and detail that hundreds of mysterious aircrafts have been spotted since the early 1940s, which has caused officials to conduct further research into the aircrafts to try and determine what they are and where they're coming from. The Mysterious Surveillance Object On the 5th of August, back in 2010, the Royal Air Force released a series of documents surrounding reported sightings of unidentified objects, with additional documentation about a specific incident 50 years prior that Winston Churchill himself banned the reporting of, out of fear that the story could create mass panic and lead to the degradation of society. The banned reports claim that on the 5th of August back in 1944, a Royal Air Force reconnaissance aircraft was returning from an undisclosed surveillance mission from France or Germany. However, while travelling over the English coastline, the surveillance crew claimed to have been suddenly intercepted by what each crew member described as a peculiar metallic object that began to match their aircraft's course and speed alongside them before the object quickly accelerated into the distance and disappeared entirely. As the craft had hovered alongside their plane, 
several members of the crew rapidly began taking a series of photographs of the object to later verify their claims, as they possessed the equipment necessary to take higher quality images and gather sensitive data of enemy aircraft. However, as they began this documentation, they claimed that something appeared to be off about the unidentified object, as the unknown craft appeared to emit no sound or use any form of known propulsion to generate its lift. According to the released documents, any proof of the object gathered by the team has been completely destroyed or lost. Given this strange development, many believe that the event was covered up in its entirety, with researchers coming forward, including one man that wrote to the government back in 1999, claiming that his father had overheard the event while in a meeting alongside Winston Churchill and the then American president Dwight D. Eisenhower. The United Kingdom has investigated mysterious aircrafts in the past. The most well-known investigation was known as Project Condeen, which was conducted by the British Ministry of Defence's intelligence staff between 1997 and 2000. The purpose of the investigation was to determine whether these mysterious aircraft sightings posed a threat to national security and whether they could be attributed to any known technology or natural phenomena. The Project Condine report, which was released to the public in 2006, concluded that the majority of sightings could be attributed to misidentifications of known objects or phenomena, such as aircraft, balloons, or meteorological events. However, the report also acknowledged that a small percentage of sightings could not be easily explained and might require further investigation. The British Ministry of Defence also maintained a reporting and investigation system called the Unidentified Object Desk until it was closed in 2009. Interestingly, since then, various workers have come forward and said that evidence has been tampered with and that various sightings that couldn't be explained weren't included in these files. As of right now, the British Ministry of Defence has stated that it would continue to investigate any credible reports of mysterious aircrafts that might have national security implications. All around the world, there appears to be a number of strange occurrences that seem to create a manipulation in both space and time. These strange occurrences have come to be known as different instances of time travel and time slips in our reality that not only causes unexplainable phenomena to surface, but can change our very perspective on the nature of our world. Various people have shared their own stories of these glitches, and it led to various pages being set up so that people can share their mysterious encounters. Just recently, an interesting video was shared on social media, and since being uploaded, it has gained hundreds of thousands of views. The user who uploaded the footage said that the event was like a glitch in the Matrix, and explained that thousands of birds were flying around in circles. The uploader said that the video was taken in Flatwoods, West Virginia, and that she had never seen this many birds in one area before. Those who saw the video said that the birds looked disorientated. One person said the following. I've seen this type of behavior before, and it's usually when something has happened nearby. For example, in my case, it was that the birds in my region were allegedly poisoned, and it caused them to act like this. End quote. What's strange is that in the last few years, this isn't the first time that events like these have been reported, and it's caused some to ask why these birds are acting this way. A few months back, several news outlets reported that something was happening to birds in various different countries, noting that they couldn't explain why so many of them were dropping out of the skies. This caused people to come forward on social media and detail their personal stories. Oddly enough, it's not just one species that's being affected. Researchers who have been studying these birds and who have tried to get to the bottom of what's going on have explained that thousands of birds in the eastern United States are falling out of the sky, with some of these events even being captured by onlookers. It's led researchers to suggest that something big is happening right now, but after collecting the data and inspecting these birds up close, scientists have said that they are no closer to understand why this is happening, and said they are worried because it's happening in various places across the world, including England, Wales, Ireland, Australia, Turkey, 
Egypt, and various other countries. As of right now, the scientists who are looking into this have ruled out some of the most common culprits, but said they can't seem to get to the bottom of what's going on. The mysterious event was first recorded in Virginia and Maryland in May of 2021, but wildlife experts have said that within the last few months, reports are spreading all throughout the country. One scientist from the Hampshire Nature Reserve located in England said the following when asked whether radio frequency radiation could be behind this strange behavior. Yes, radio frequency radiation can affect birds. Radio frequency radiation is a type of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation that is emitted by wireless communication devices such as cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, and radio and television transmitters. Studies have shown that exposure to radio frequency radiation can affect birds' behavior, physiology, and reproductive success. For example, radio frequency radiation exposure has been linked to changes in birds' migratory behavior, changes in their feeding patterns, and a reduction in their ability to navigate using Earth's magnetic field. Radio frequency radiation exposure has also been shown to affect the reproductive success of birds, including a reduction in the number of eggs laid and a decrease in the survival rate of chicks. End quote. Chelsea Jones, a spokesperson for the Animal Welfare League of Arlington, Virginia, said the following. In May 2022, we started to realize that something unusual was going on. We have received 300 birds so far, but that is just counting the deceased birds. The real total is much higher. End quote. As of right now, further tests are being conducted in order to get to the bottom of why this keeps happening. Staying on the subject of mysterious events, the USS Eldridge has long caught the attention of those interested in the unknown. Referred to by many as the Philadelphia Experiment, the strange military experiments surrounding that of the United States military, creating an electromagnetic bubble around the large naval vessel known as the USS Eldridge, helped to create one of the strange anomalous properties of our world. Originally designed to create completely radar-invisible ships by bouncing radar waves around the ship. These experiments would go on to create a warped space-time field around the ship and transport it through time and space, ending up in different areas of the world and even sending two men through time in an effort to fix the timeline. Although the stories surrounding the Philadelphia experiment span many different accounts and decades worth of government cover-up and intervention, it eventually led to one of the men sent through time, Ed Cameron, coming into contact with humans of the far future as they were preparing to stop a cataclysmic event that was thought to be able to wipe out all life on the planet. Interestingly enough, despite these events having occurred back in the early 1950s, Ed Cameron would go on to make several startling premonitions about the future, including that of color televisions in the future, and even of future events such as that of hospital conditions, medicine, emerging technologies surrounding hospitals, as well as changes in the political map in the future. The majority of these findings were during his time spent in a hospital after being sent into the future of the late 1980s, and spending a large amount of his time during this period watching television, baffled by the technology of the future. This would later lead to the further written witness accounts of a man by the name of Al Bielek, of whom claimed to have been the reincarnated Ed Cameron, and was able to piece together many of the claims and questions surrounding that of Ed Cameron. He would go on to create a three-hour-long tell-all video that he would post to YouTube before his passing, in which he not only further explained the science behind the Philadelphia experiment, but went into the strange future sightings of humanity, as well as the terrible cataclysmic event that is believed to occur in the year 2843 that will end all life on our planet as we know it. A discovered 1.8 billion year old nuclear reactor. Back in 1972, when a large amount of uranium ore was mined from the Oklo mine located out in the country of Gabron, a small nation found in Central Africa. Scientists began to test the uranium deposits to catalogue the amount of recovered uranium-235 that was gathered from the site and could be used for ongoing efforts of nuclear fission and nuclear reactors. Unfortunately, they quickly realised that a substantial amount of uranium-235 was missing from the ore deposits as uranium-235 naturally forms a solid concentration of 0.072%, but found a significant amount lacking from the mined minerals. As they investigated the situation, Believing that perhaps more than 200 kilograms had been stolen, they
they quickly realized that located near the mined location was the perfect conditions to form a believed to be naturally forming nuclear reactor that is dated to be roughly 1.8 billion years old. Scientists claim that the uranium ore was used up when a naturally formed cavern using groundwater to help stabilize the nuclear reaction was discovered underground. Theorists, however, have an alternative explanation. Given the fact that the specifications required to form a naturally made nuclear reactor require specific storage of the uranium-235, the continued influx of water and a number of steps to prevent the compounds from becoming superheated, it is believed that the location is not naturally formed and rather the use of a primitive nuclear reactor by time-traveling humans needed to create a substantial amount of energy. Today, the claim is widely debated as one of the key pieces of evidence of time-traveling humans and their influence on the past. Are Shadow People Time Travelers? Shadow people sound a bit creepy, right? They are defined as supernatural shadow-like humanoid figures that, according to believers, are seen flickering on walls and ceilings in the viewer's peripheral vision. Shadow people are considered as entities of the underworld, but those who have experienced them are not sure whether they are evil, helpful, or just there. Scientists have tried to offer explanations for the phenomena. For example, some researchers conclude that seeing shadow figures are simply symptoms of sleep paralysis or deprivation, and others have noted that drug addicts are more likely to experience these sorts of hallucinations. Alternatively, they can simply be the mind playing tricks on somebody who's experiencing a heightened sense of alert, for example, when you're walking down a dark alley at night. However, some people are convinced that shadow people are actually apparitions of time travelers. They think that the reason that they are only in shadow form is because we, on Earth, can't clearly see the future and therefore find it hard to see these figures. Instead of being supernatural or devilish creatures, they are actually just people from other dimensions. They also don't seem to be taking any notice of the people that see them, therefore fitting in with the common time travel theme. Often when time traveling, the person experiencing it is not noticed by anybody else. The thing is, this is all heavily disputed, and the scientific explanations are well weighted in their favor. We'll never know for sure if shadow people are time travelers or not, or even real. But one thing is for sure. The human imagination is a powerful thing. Time travel sounds amazing, and if the people we've spoken about today did experience another dimension, then in some ways, they are incredibly lucky. Just imagine what we could do for the world if we could access information from the future. We could cure diseases, save the environment, and prevent wars. Time travel is something that everybody has thought about from time to time, and if it is one day developed and isn't just something out of a sci-fi movie, then we reckon that the human race is in for a bewildering experience. The concept of time travel has long captivated the human imagination and sparked fascination and curiosity across cultures and generations. The very idea of journeying through time, either to revisit the past or explore the future, holds a profound allure for many. One alleged time traveller just recently announced that something bad is going to happen. The individual in question said that his name is Alexander, and he claimed to be a time traveller from the future. He appeared dishevelled, wearing clothes that seemed out of place, and carried an air of urgency and foreboding. He spoke of a future society on the brink of collapse, ravaged by environmental degradation, social unrest and economic inequality. His words painted a grim picture of a world plagued by wars, scarcity of resources and a complete breakdown of societal structures. He warned that unless immediate action was taken, this impending catastrophe would occur within the next five years. Users on social media listened with a mix of disbelief and concern. Some dismissed Alexander as being delusional, while others contemplated the possibility of his claims. They pondered the repercussions of ignoring his warning and the potential consequences for their own lives and future generations. Although the idea of Alexander being a time traveller seemed far-fetched, his message weighed heavily on those who had read it. Many voiced their concerns with how the world is and said that it's likely that things are going to get worse in the future. Alexander posted one more on social media, telling people once again that things will get much worse before they get better, and told people that an uprising will happen within the next five years, saying that people couldn't deal with the conditions any longer. Some pointed out that these claims are rooted in reality, with one of Alexander's warnings being about famine. 
The issue of famine and its potential future impact is a complex and multifaceted one. While it is challenging to predict with certainty, there are several factors that suggest the possibility of increased risks of famine in the future. One of the primary factors contributing to concerns about future famine is the growing global population. As the world's population continues to expand, the demand for food resources increases. Coupled with environmental challenges, land degradation and water scarcity, meeting the food needs of a larger population becomes more difficult. If proper measures are not taken to enhance agricultural productivity, improve distribution systems and address environmental concerns, the risk of food shortages and subsequent famines could rise. Changing weather patterns, extreme weather events and rising temperatures can have detrimental effects on agricultural production. Heat waves, droughts, floods and shifts in rainfall patterns can lead to crop failures, livestock losses and reduced food availability. Vulnerable regions that heavily rely on agriculture as their main source of food and income are particularly at risk. If adaptation strategies and resilient agricultural practices are not implemented, the impacts on food production may exacerbate the risk of famine. Furthermore, economic factors, including poverty, play a significant role in determining the vulnerability of populations to famine. Alexander warned that we have to prepare for this because as of right now, there's no way of stopping it. Another alleged time traveller is that of Andrew Basiago. Andrew Basiago is a controversial figure known for his claims of being a participant in a secret government project involving time travel and teleportation. While his assertions have gained attention and sparked curiosity among some individuals, they are met with scepticism by many within the scientific community and the general public. Basiago asserts that he was involved in a classified project called Project Pegasus during his childhood in the late 1960s and early 1970s. According to his accounts, the project involved sending individuals, including adolescents, through time and space using advanced technologies. Basiago claims to have been selected as a participant in these experiments due to his exceptional abilities and intelligence. One of Basiago's most remarkable claims is that he was sent back in time to witness historical events, including significant moments such as Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address in 1863. He asserts that these experiences were part of the government's efforts to gather intelligence and alter the course of history. Basiago has shared detailed accounts of his alleged time travel experiences, including specific dates, locations and interactions with historical figures. He has presented photographs that he claims provide evidence of his presence during these time-travelling excursions. However, critics argue that the authenticity and reliability of these photographs are questionable and they lack verifiable evidence to support his claims. Furthermore, Basiago's accounts of time travel and teleportation go against our current understanding of physics and the limitations imposed by the laws of nature. The concept of time travel, especially backward time travel, remains highly speculative and is not supported by scientific consensus. While scientists have explored theories such as wormholes and time dilation, the practicality and plausibility of these ideas are yet to be fully understood or realized. Additionally, Basiago's claims lack independent corroboration, making it challenging to assess the veracity of his experiences. The absence of credible witnesses or other participants from Project Pegasus further undermines the credibility of his accounts. Skeptics argue that the lack of collaboration or support from others who allegedly participated in these clandestine projects raises doubts about the existence of such initiatives. Basiago's assertions have been met with skepticism by researchers, scientists and the general public. His claims have not been subjected to rigorous scientific scrutiny or replicated under controlled conditions. Without substantial evidence, it is challenging to accept his accounts as reliable or accurate representations of historical events or time travel experiences. It is worth noting that mainstream scientific and academic communities remain unconvinced and cautious in their assessment of his assertions. The scientific method, which relies on empirical evidence, testable hypotheses and peer review, demands a higher standard of proof than what Basiago has presented thus far. While Basiago's claims may be captivating and fuel the imagination, it is crucial to approach them critically and with skepticism. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, 
and until compelling, verifiable evidence is presented, it is reasonable to question the validity of his assertions. As of right now, Andrew Basiago's claims of involvement in a secret government project involving time travel and teleportation are met with skepticism and scrutiny by the scientific community and the general public. While his accounts of time travel experiences may capture the interest of some, they lack the necessary evidence and independent corroboration to be considered credible or scientifically valid. It is important to approach such claims with a critical mindset, relying on empirical evidence and rigorous scientific investigation to assess their plausibility. Rock Apes in Vietnam As the American GIs battled through the dense jungles of Vietnam, the US government began a defoliation program to assist in the jungle warfare and clear out the native plant life in war-torn areas. Although the lasting effects of Agent Orange are still being uncovered in the modern day, with a wide range of birth defects, brain damage, heart damage and cancer-causing agents, there appears to have been an unforeseen consequence of Agent Orange during the Vietnam War. Referred to by American soldiers as rock apes, consistent reports were made by a wide number of platoons of giant humanoid creatures fleeing the dying jungles of Vietnam and encountering the American GIs with sticks and rocks in battle. One veteran wrote the following report. Serving with the 101st Airborne in the mountains of Vietnam, I saw them, the rock apes, on many occasions. They were as large as a big man and usually were in small groups of two to three. Unlike Bigfoot, but were bigger than most men and smaller than Bigfoot. They were spotted on days, but would also set off our trip flares at night. This could very well be evidence that Bigfoot-like species inhabits the jungles of Vietnam and, under threat of their environment collapsing, came out of their hidden regions and battled with soldiers to save their forests, only to relocate to other jungles unaffected by the Agent Orange defoliant. World War II Airman UFO Encounter some of the most terrifying dogfights during wartime were first experienced during the Second World War, with desperate Japanese pilots committing kamikaze just to get a leg up on the war, German fighter planes pushing the boundaries of flight technologies to fly faster and further than previously theorised possible, underground British factories piecing together advanced fighter jets with dwindling resources for dramatic last stands and US Air Force pilots holding their own in some of the largest aerial bombers that had ever been constructed in history. All of these advancements failed in comparison, however, to the strange technological advances witnessed by United States airmen that claimed to have witnessed countless encounters with unidentified flying objects. Described as cigar-shaped rocket-like crafts on the late November evening back in 1944, the 415th Night Fighter Squadron reported seeing a number of peculiar lights along the Rhine Valley Ridge, north of the French-German border. The report detailed that there were about 81 lights in a row that emanated a fiery orange glow. As the Night Fighter Squadron turned to attack the craft, the lights faded and appeared to have disappeared from the region entirely. This was one of a countless number of military reports that described similar-looking unidentified flying objects with one of the strangest reports being the witness account of Lieutenant Samuel A. Krasny. According to Krasny's report, as he was flying, he noticed a large, wingless cigar-shaped object with a reddish glow floating alongside him just a few yards off the plane's wingtip, seemingly attached by an invisible wire maintaining a perfect distance and speed. Immediately, Krasny went into evasive maneuvers and rolled the plane while dropping down to get away from the craft, only to witness the cigar-shaped object follow his maneuvers perfectly and maintain its position relative to his airplane with perfect cadence. After several minutes of additional maneuvers, Krasny said that the object suddenly faded in colour and shot off at an incredible impulse speed away from his craft before disappearing from sight. These lights were later provided the name of Foo Fighters by the airmen witnessed in reference to Smokey Stover's comics that would say, where there's food, there's fire, reminiscent of the strange craft's fiery colour. Woodwoes Woodwoes, also known as the Hairy Wildman, is a mysterious creature that is believed to have existed in Europe during the Middle Ages. It is believed that this Bigfoot-like creature had hair all over its body. It was more close to humans than apes, and it could be described as an extremely hairy wild human. There are a number of theories about the Woodwoes. 
Some people believed that wood woeses were actually people who had gone into the woods. As they lived in the woods, over time they adapted to the conditions and in order to protect themselves, they grew hair all over their bodies. According to another theory, some people who were born with an unusually high density of hair on their bodies retreated to the woods and decided to live in isolation as they could not live a normal life in human society. However, some modern-day researchers have proposed that they were actually Neanderthals who were still alive in Europe up until the Middle Ages. The Praying Mantis Humanoid a couple were walking together in Chicago's Schiller Woods, a large, fairly flat area of woodland on the outskirts of Chicago O'Hare Airport. There isn't anything particularly special about Schiller Woods, but the area has been host to multiple deaths over the years, most predating our story by some time. However, this isn't what we're focusing on today. The couple, for whatever reason, were going to practice a pagan ritual in the woods. They completed the majority of this ritual, but towards the end they spotted something strange amongst the trees. The lady jumped up, startled at what she'd spotted, and thought they'd just seen the Slenderman. The figure was around seven or eight feet tall and had a strange grey complexion with big bulbous eyes, the sort you'd find on an insect when viewed under a microscope. The witness explained that the creature had long arms that dropped below its knees, and that these arms were attached to strange claw-like hands. The creature allegedly seemed keen to stay away from the couple and remained amongst the trees. It seemed reclusive and almost scared of them. The couple thought it would be best to leave the creature alone and hastily made their way back to the car. Still startled and feeling strangely in awe of what they'd just witnessed, the couple discussed whether either of them had noticed anything strange or different whilst they'd been practicing the ritual. Neither of them could think of anything, but on the way home, they noticed something. The area around the woods was normally densely populated with animals. All sorts of deer, raccoons, and other wildlife were commonly sighted near Schiller. However, on the night of the sighting, no wildlife was to be seen anywhere. Schiller woods were eerily quiet and empty. The creature that the couple saw had been described as a humanoid in the form of a praying mantis. Male praying mantis can fly, are long-bodied with disproportionately sized limbs. They're usually green, but given this one was seven feet tall and allegedly part human, it's forgiven for not totally conforming to the stereotype. Whatever the couple saw in Schiller Woods that evening, we're sure that they're glad that thing stayed behind the trees. Spring Healed Jack in 1837, a woman named Mary Stevens was walking to Lavender Hill in South London when suddenly a mysterious figure leaped in front of her. It grabbed her and scratched her body with its claws. As the woman started screaming, the passerby rushed to help her, but before they could reach, the mysterious figure had vanished. Locals searched for the mysterious aggressor, but they could not find him. This was only the first incident involving the mysterious aggressor with sharp, claw-like hands. Within the next few days, several other young women also reported similar incidents in London and the surrounding areas. The incidents associated with the mysterious figure made their way to the press, who gave it the name of spring -Heeled Jack. In February 1838, spring -Heeled Jack made another appearance. This time, a woman named Jane Alsop claimed that she was attacked at the door of her house by a mysterious gentleman who was wearing a cloak. According to her, someone had rang the doorbell, and when she opened the door to see who it was, the mysterious gentleman took off the cloak and breathed white and blue flames onto her. As she stood there in shock, the mysterious figure started cutting her clothes with its claws. The attacker fled after Alsop's sister rushed to the door to help her. The police arrested a man named Thomas Milbank, and a case was made against him. However, he couldn't be convicted as Jane Alsop insisted that the man who had attacked her could breathe fire. During 1838, many other incidents of spring Hilled Jack attacking young women were reported, and gradually these incidents spread throughout England. Similar incidents were reported in Scotland as well. However, over time, the incidents associated to spring Hilled Jack started decreasing. The mysterious man became a part of popular culture, however. A number of novels were written about him and various supernatural abilities were attributed to him. The last reported sighting of spring Jack was in 1904. 
Since then, there haven't been any other sightings. Over the years, there has been a lot of debate as to who or what this mysterious man or creature was. Some believe that it was merely a man trying to terrorize the locals in an effort to gain popularity. Others believe that it was a ghost-like creature that was attracted to young women. Whatever the reality of spring Jack was, this Victorian demon has become a part of popular culture forever. In each passing year, numerous captivating discoveries have continued to emerge, showcasing the vast extent of our yet unexplored knowledge. One particularly intriguing revelation that gained significant attention was the circulation of a photograph on social media. The image depicted a perplexing sight, an apparent ancient stargate ingeniously concealed within the depths of a towering mountain. This captivating finding not only piques our curiosity, but also serves as a reminder of the profound mysteries that still lie hidden within unexplored areas. Scientists and researchers do not support the existence of stargates in the literal sense, since there is a lack of empirical evidence validating their existence. However, they do acknowledge that stargate-like devices were created by ancient cultures to foster a sense of proximity to their deities. These devices served as a means of communication, allowing individuals to establish contact with their gods. While the belief in physical stargates remains unsubstantiated, the understanding is that these devices symbolically represented a spiritual connection between ancient civilizations and their divine beings. This comprehensive explanation delves deeply into the topic, providing a thorough analysis and enriching the understanding of stargates. It is reasonable to infer that the discovered object was a type of device, considering its location deep within a mountain. This aligns with the overarching idea of placing significant objects at high altitudes to foster a sense of connection between ancient civilizations and divine beings. Delving deeper into this concept, it is evident that positioning objects in elevated areas was done intentionally to create a profound connection with the celestial realm. According to one user's statement, upon observing the outer rings of the structure, it becomes apparent that its appearance defies the characteristics typically associated with natural formations. Rather, it resembles something that one might expect to find within the remnants of an ancient civilization that had long ceased to exist. An interesting and peculiar aspect of this structure is its location embedded within the side of a mountain, adding further intrigue to its origins and purpose. A significant scarcity of information has been disclosed regarding the discovery, and it is crucial to acknowledge that scientists have asserted that an astonishing 98% of humanity's past remains shrouded in mystery, with numerous civilizations having risen and fallen during this enigmatic era, most of which remain completely unknown to us. The passage of countless eons has profoundly altered the face of our planet, leading us to consider the possibility that remnants of these lost civilizations may lie hidden beneath the Earth's surface or submerged deep within the vast expanses of our oceans. Throughout human history, the night sky has ignited our imagination with the distant twinkling lights of stars and galaxies. The concept of stargates, inspired by science fiction and speculative theories, has captured our fascination as a potential means of traversing vast cosmic distances and exploring the mysteries of the universe. The concept of stargates has been popularized by science fiction. While science fiction often takes liberties with scientific accuracy, it can serve as a starting point for exploring more grounded theoretical possibilities. Wormholes, hypothetical passages through space-time, form the theoretical basis for stargates. They are often depicted as tunnels that connect distant regions of the universe, allowing for faster-than-light travel between two points. These wormholes are inspired by the solutions to Einstein's equations of general relativity, known as Einstein-Rosen bridges. In theory, a traversable wormhole could be stabilized by exotic matter with negative energy density, which counteracts the gravitational forces that would otherwise cause the wormhole to collapse. However, the nature and properties of exotic matter are still speculative and have not been observed or fully understood. The concept of stargates while captivating, presents significant challenges and paradoxes that must be addressed. One of the most notable challenges is the need for exotic matter with negative energy density to stabilize and maintain a traversable wormhole. 
This exotic matter's properties remain largely speculative, and the existence of such matter is still unproven. Additionally, the potential for causality violations and paradoxes arises when considering time travel through stargates. The famous grandfather paradox, in which a person travels back in time and prevents their own grandparents from meeting, highlights the complexities and contradictions that time travel can introduce. While stargates remain largely within the realm of speculative physics, scientific exploration does include investigations into the theoretical underpinnings of wormholes and their potential feasibility. Researchers continue to explore the mathematical and theoretical aspects of wormholes, seeking to understand their implications for space-time and the laws of physics. However, the current state of knowledge and technology is far from being able to construct or utilize stargates for practical interstellar travel. The energy requirements, stability concerns, and lack of a comprehensive understanding of exotic matter pose significant obstacles. The idea of stargates, even as a theoretical concept, has broader implications for the future of space exploration. While physical stargates as depicted in science fiction may remain a distant possibility, the concepts of wormholes and space-time manipulation have inspired discussions about potential breakthroughs in propulsion systems and interstellar travel. Research into stargates has the potential to advance our understanding of fundamental physics, including the nature of space-time and the properties of exotic matter. While the practical realization of stargates may be speculative, the exploration of these ideas can push the boundaries of human knowledge and lead to unforeseen discoveries. The landscapes of our planet are dotted with awe-inspiring ancient structures that continue to captivate our imagination and challenge our understanding of history. Among these enigmatic feats of architecture are megalithic structures perched on the summits of mountains. These ancient civilizations, driven by spirituality, technology, and cultural significance, built these structures atop lofty peaks, leaving behind enduring mysteries that beckon us to unravel their secrets. The choice to construct megalithic structures atop mountains was far from arbitrary. Rather, it was laden with profound symbolism and spiritual significance. For many ancient cultures, mountains were considered sacred realms that connected the earthly and divine realms. The elevation above the surrounding landscape symbolized a closer proximity to the gods or cosmic forces. The colossal effort required to transport and assemble the massive stones conveyed the dedication and reverence these civilizations held for their deities or cosmic beliefs. The act of ascending to the mountaintop to engage with the divine likely held deep spiritual meaning fostering a sense of humility, awe, and communion with the universe. The construction of megalithic structures on mountaintops showcased the remarkable engineering and organizational capabilities of ancient civilizations. These structures were often composed of massive stones, some weighing several tons, requiring advanced methods of quarrying, transportation, and precision placement. Megalithic construction often involved intricate interlocking techniques, such as dovetailing, where stones were shaped to fit seamlessly together without the use of mortar. The ingenuity behind these methods remains a testament to the knowledge and skills possessed by these civilizations. The creation of megalithic structures on mountaintops was deeply intertwined with the cultural beliefs and practices of ancient societies. The alignment of these structures with celestial events, such as solstices or equinoxes, suggests that they may have been used as celestial observatories or markers for agricultural cycles. In some instances, these mountaintop structures served as burial sites for revered individuals or leaders. The lofty elevation and commanding presence of these structures could have symbolized the eternal connection between the deceased and the heavens. The decision to build megalithic structures on mountaintops was not without its challenges. Ancient civilizations had to overcome geographical obstacles, harsh climates, and logistical difficulties to transport heavy materials to these remote locations. The mastery displayed in overcoming these challenges underscores the significance attached to these structures and the cultural determination of these civilizations. Several theories have emerged to explain the rationale behind constructing megalithic structures on mountaintops. One theory posits that these structures were constructed as a means of protection with the elevated position providing a strategic advantage against potential invaders. However, the sheer size and ceremonial aspects of many of these structures 
suggest that their primary purpose went beyond mere defense. Another theory suggests that these structures were constructed to serve as beacons or markers for travelers navigating vast landscapes. The sight of these towering structures would provide guidance and orientation to those journeying through unfamiliar terrain. The preservation of megalithic structures atop mountains often defies the ravages of time and the elements. The isolated and elevated locations of these structures, shielded from urban development and modern construction, contribute to their longevity. This preservation allows contemporary generations to marvel at the ingenuity and vision of ancient civilizations. The mystique surrounding these structures fuels curiosity and speculation. Their remote locations and the limited historical records from the eras in which they were built leave room for interpretation and imagination. As our knowledge of history continues to evolve, new discoveries may shed light on the motivations, practices and significance of these structures. The annals of history are filled with stories of triumphs, failures, innovations and revolutions. Yet, beneath the surface, there lies a vast expanse of uncharted territory, a void where 95% or more of history remains shrouded in mystery, hidden from our view. The scarcity of historical records and the fragmented nature of surviving artifacts leave us with a gaping hole in our understanding of the past. The scarcity of historical records is attributed to a multitude of factors, each contributing to the enigma of missing history. The ancient world was often characterized by oral traditions and perishable materials, which made it challenging for narratives to endure across generations. Papyrus, parchment and paper, although used for writing, were susceptible to decay, fire and the ravages of time. Conflict, conquest and the deliberate destruction of knowledge further contributed to the gaps in our historical record. Libraries and cultural repositories have been lost to war, conquests, and ideological purges. The deliberate suppression of narratives, be it for political, religious, or cultural reasons, has led to the erasure of perspectives that once existed. The historical record has often favored the powerful, the wealthy, and the dominant cultures. The stories of marginalized communities, women, and indigenous peoples have been pushed to the periphery leading to an incomplete and skewed understanding of the past. Voices that held equal significance but lacked prominence were often ignored or silenced. Archaeological discoveries, although invaluable, have also been influenced by cultural biases. Some artifacts and historical sites have been overlooked due to a lack of understanding of their cultural or spiritual significance by outsiders. Even when records exist, the challenge of deciphering ancient scripts, languages and symbolism presents formidable barriers. Historical texts might be written in scripts that are no longer decipherable or languages that have long faded into obscurity. The challenge of interpreting the context, nuances and intentions of the authors complicates our efforts to piece together the narrative of the past. Furthermore, the survival of artifacts is not guaranteed. Natural disasters, looting, and time itself contribute to the fragmentation and loss of historical materials. A single artifact, when separated from its context, can leave gaps in our understanding, leading to misconceptions or incomplete narratives. The missing history casts a shadow over our understanding of the human experience. The vast stretches of unrecorded time leave us with questions about the daily lives, cultures, innovations, and struggles of countless generations. The erasure of certain voices and narratives leaves us with a distorted view of the complexity of human societies. The missing history also undermines our ability to trace the evolution of ideas, technologies, and social systems. Our comprehension of the roots of contemporary challenges and the paths taken by previous civilizations is hindered by the absence of their experiences and decisions. Efforts to reclaim the missing history are a testament to human determination and technological advancements. Archaeological discoveries, historical linguistics, and interdisciplinary collaborations have led to groundbreaking insights. The decipherment of the Rosetta Stone, for example, unlocked the secrets of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, allowing us to access previously impenetrable texts. Advancements in imaging, digital preservation, and artificial intelligence have enabled researchers to reconstruct documents and artifacts that were once deemed irretrievably lost. 
high-resolution imaging techniques, multispectral imaging, and virtual reconstructions have breathed new life into the pages of antiquity. The universe, with its vast expanse and myriad galaxies, has long beckoned humanity to ponder the existence of advanced civilizations beyond our own. The search for advanced life and intelligent beings has captivated the minds of scientists, philosophers, and enthusiasts alike. Advanced civilizations, often referred to as Type II, Type III, or even Type IV civilizations on the Kardashev scale, are hypothetical societies that have achieved levels of technological advancement far beyond our current capabilities. These civilizations could harness energy from sources such as stars, control weather patterns, manipulate matter at atomic and subatomic levels, and potentially even traverse between galaxies. One hallmark of advanced civilizations is their ability to overcome resource limitations and environmental challenges. They may have developed sustainable energy sources and technologies that reduce their impact on their home planet. The pursuit of knowledge, scientific curiosity, and the ability to manipulate fundamental forces could be defining aspects of their culture. The search for advanced civilizations extends beyond traditional scientific methods. Technological advancements have enabled the exploration of outer space through radio telescopes, space probes, and the study of exoplanets. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Initiative seeks to detect potential signals or communications from intelligent beings. Moreover, the search encompasses the study of cosmic phenomena that might indicate the presence of advanced civilizations. Dyson spheres, megastructures that could encapsulate a star to harness its energy and the study of anomalous cosmic objects are avenues through which scientists probe the potential existence of advanced societies. The discovery of advanced civilizations would be a watershed moment in human history with profound implications for science, philosophy and society as a whole. The knowledge that we are not alone in the universe could challenge our understanding of human uniqueness and spur a re-evaluation of our place in the cosmos. Advanced civilizations could serve as beacons of inspiration, offering insights into the possibilities of technological innovation, sustainable development and cultural evolution. Their wisdom and knowledge might help us tackle global challenges such as climate change, energy scarcity and interstellar travel. However, the discovery could also raise ethical dilemmas and uncertainties. Interacting with advanced civilizations might require careful consideration to prevent unintended consequences, ensure mutual respect and safeguard our own interests. It could prompt discussions about sharing knowledge, resources and even cooperating on cosmic endeavours. The apparent absence of conclusive evidence for advanced civilizations, despite the vast number of potentially habitable planets in the universe, gives rise to the Fermi paradox. One explanation is the rare Earth hypothesis, suggesting that the conditions required for complex life and intelligent civilizations are exceedingly rare. Another possibility is the Great Filter, proposing that there exists a monumental barrier that prevents civilizations from advancing to the point of becoming detectable or widespread. Moreover, the concept of a zoo hypothesis proposes that advanced civilizations intentionally avoid contacting or revealing themselves to younger, less advanced societies to allow for their natural development. The discovery of a galactic community observing a non-interference policy could provide insights into the silence in our search for advanced life. Contemplating the existence of advanced civilizations invites us to reflect on our own progress as a species. It prompts us to consider the challenges we face, the trajectory of our technological advancements, and the responsibilities that come with acquiring greater knowledge and power. The pursuit of knowledge and the desire to connect with other potential civilizations underscore the human spirit of curiosity and exploration. As we strive to better understand the universe, we also engage in self-exploration, examining the qualities that define us as sentient beings capable of understanding the cosmos. Physicist claims alien messages may be hidden in the stars. Everyone has at some point wondered about the possibility of life outside of Earth. It is nearly impossible not to when gazing into the empty, never-ending space above us, counting the stars. With space being so vast and seemingly endless, many wonder how or why we have not yet contacted extraterrestrial life. 
This phenomenon has been named the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox refers to the confusing contradiction between the complete lack of evidence for extraterrestrial life and the seemingly high probability of their existence. Some scientists believe they have the solution to explain why we have not made any contact with aliens. Terry Rudolph, a quantum physicist at the Imperial College London, suggests that aliens have been attempting to communicate with us through the stars themselves. Rudolph speculates that if aliens were to communicate vast distances, they would likely attempt to do so in more subtle ways, as to direct any communication to one planet without interference from other extraterrestrial life. As a result, a possible method of communication would be through the stars. He further explains his hypothesis by stating that aliens could potentially manipulate the photons inside individual stars to alter the light emitted from them. This fluctuation in the light of a star could be translated if we could uncover the code. Rudolph postulates, photons can propagate billions of light years and retain significant quantum coherence. This makes stars a reliable resource for communication and allows for messages to be sent across extremely long distances without disturbance. He believes that this method of communication could be appealing to an alien population if they are aware of other alien populations that pose a threat. So how can we translate these messages? As an extensively educated physicist, Rudolf feels confident in the possibility of this theory. However, he does not claim that aliens are communicating in this manner, rather that it is possible. If his theory were true, it still leaves one crucial issue. We have no way of translating messages in the stars. If aliens were utilizing this method, they would need to provide us with some form of a decoder to allow us to understand any of their messages. Until then, surely it remains a mystery. Telescopes detect the biggest explosion since the Big Bang In a recent development, astronomers have discovered the largest explosion since the Big Bang. The explosion resulting from a massive black hole occurred at the center of the Ephucus galaxy, about 390 million light-years away. This blast is not just speculation from eager scientists. NASA was able to confirm the blast because the radio data and X-rays matched each other, and low-frequency radio telescopes found that the cavity was filled with radio plasma. While scientists have long been interested in the Ephucus galaxy due to its strange curved edge, there had been plenty of doubt about if this curve could have been caused by a black hole. Black holes can release vast amounts of material and energy as radio jets that collide with other objects in the locality. Despite the black hole theory, many astronomers actually believed that the cavity was too big to be a black hole. The team who discovered this incredible event are researchers at the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research in Western Australia. The team used four telescopes for their work, each stationed in different parts of the world, including the European Space Agency's XMM Newton X-ray Space Observatory and NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The explosion was so large that it cut through the hot gas that surrounds black holes, called cluster plasma. According to Melanie Johnson Hollett, a professor at Curtin University and co-author of the research paper, We've seen outbursts in the centers of galaxies before, but this one is really, really massive, and we don't know why it's so big. The nature of this massive explosion has drawn comparisons to another destructive, large explosion right here on Earth, the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which destroyed about 200 square miles of wilderness. Despite these comparisons, the crater the eruption created could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies in a row. Another interesting aspect of this explosion is just how slow it occurred. According to Johnston Hollett, the explosion looked as if it had been slowly happening over hundreds of millions of years. Excitingly, this discovery may have made it possible to find more outbursts in the future. Astronomers are now able to use low-frequency radio telescopes that may make it possible to discover more explosions like this one. Strange Infrared Light Emitting from a Pulsar The cosmos is a thing of awe, horror and fascination. Space has been the subject of speculation for aeons. 
Among some of the most questioned space-related topics, black holes and neutron stars have to be some of the most popular discussed topics due to how little we truly know about them, or how they fit in the larger scheme of the universe. Recently, the Hubble Space Telescope has discovered something unsettling and intriguing. One neutron star has been caught displaying strange swirls of glowing infrared light. When a supernova explodes, it sometimes leaves behind neutron stars. Neutron stars are an estimated 1.4 times denser than our Sun, but only 12.4 miles in diameter. Space.com claims that at such an insane density, a teaspoon would weigh a billion tons. Occasionally, neutron stars spin at high speeds and release electromagnetic radiation, such as X-rays. These neutron stars are known as pulsars. RXJ 0806.4-4124 is the name of the neutron star emitting infrared light and studying it might help develop our understanding of how neutron stars work. RX and six other X-ray pulsars near us, being 3,300 light-years away from Earth, are referred to by astronomers as the Magnificent Seven. The reason why these seven stars are so extraordinary is that they burn intensely hot, hotter than they logically should, given the available energy at their disposal and their age. They also spin around at a slower rate than most other known pulsars. Bettina Posselt, a lead author of an astrological paper in the Astrophysical Journal, states, We observed an extended area of infrared emissions around this neutron star the total size of which translates into about 200 astronomical units, approximately 18 billion miles, at the assumed distance of the pulsar. Never before has a pulsar emitted infrared light, especially with such an insanely large signal. The emission is clearly above what the neutron star itself emits. It doesn't come from the neutron star alone. And though astronomers are frantically coming up with theories and suggestions, Nothing can be proven just yet. We will have to observe and hope that we will be able to uncover the secrets of the pulsar RXJ 0806.4-4124. First ever documented tectonic activity on exoplanet. Exoplanets are extremely hard to see. Hidden by a bright light that glares from the stars they orbit, Exoplanets are basically classified as anything that orbits a larger star like Earth. In a new report submitted by the University of Bern, scientists found that the night side of an exoplanet called LHS 3844b is tectonically active. This exoplanet, which orbits the red dwarf star LHS 3844, was detected by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite. Though its surface is comparable to that of Mercury, it is larger than Earth and orbits its parent star in 11 hours. Tobias Meyer, an astronomer of the university, mentioned the huge variance of temperatures. We thought that such a large temperature difference could affect the flow of matter inside the planet. The temperatures being referenced to are degrees upwards of 800 degrees Celsius on the sun's side and below minus 25 Celsius on the night side. Similar to the activity seen in Hawaii and Iceland's volcanic areas, researchers witnessed the swelling of material on one side of the planet. They determined this swelling could cause activity across the hemisphere. While they believe that one side of this exoplanet has a great deal of volcanic activity, the other side of the mysterious planet seems to have none at all. This type of tectonic activity documentation, however, is a first. Until now, we have only seen volcanoes of this nature grow in areas on Earth. How many more tectonically active stars and planets could be in our atmosphere? We are excited to keep following along and find out. Scientists are realizing that a mysterious, fast radio burst from space looks strangely familiar. In the galaxy M81, 12 million light-years away, scientists saw strange, bright flashes that are drawing up memories from flashes found in the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is a famous remnant of an old supernova that humans witnessed all the way back in 1054 AD. Those flashes, now known as repeating fast radio bursts, or FRBs, were seen by multiple different cultures, such as Chinese astronomers who saw the star above the southern horn of Taurus, as well as Arab and Japanese astronomers. 
The flashes remained brightly shining for 23 days and were six times brighter than Venus, according to the astronomers at the time. It took 700 years for the star remnant to be spotted by telescope by John Bevis, a British astronomer. Famous astronomer Charles Messier even found the star 27 years later and included it in his catalogue of Messier objects. Then, another 200 years later, in the 1960s, astronomers detected a fluctuating radio source where the Crab Nebula lies and determined that the signal came from a pulsar or a neutron star with a strong magnetic field. Now, the flashes that were recently detected by scientists are being compared to those witnessed 1,000 years ago. According to Kenzi Ninmo, a PhD student in astronomy, some of the signals we measured are short and extremely powerful, in just the same way as some signals from the Crab Pulsar. Astronomers are still trying to figure out the nature of fast radio bursts because where they were found is quite peculiar. Usually, FRBs are found in galaxies abundant with young stars, but the radio dishes pointed the signal's source to a group of old stars called a globular cluster. The source of the signal challenges the idea that magnetars, the strongest magnets in the universe and a type of supernova remnant, are responsible for FRBs. This is because the explanation works well when young stars are abundant, but when there is a substantial number of old stars, as is true for galaxy M81, the explanation begins to make less sense. Some astronomers, however, believe it's possible that the magnetar was created by a white dwarf that pulled gas away from another nearby star. The added mass may have caused the dwarf star to turn into a magnetar. Whatever the explanation of the fast radio bursts in M81, astronomers believe there is definitely something strange going on. As time passes, hopefully, answers begin to come in. Asteroid impacts may spread life to other planets Extraterrestrial life is something that has undoubtedly piqued everyone's interest at some point during their lifetime. Computer simulations now seem to suggest that microbes within rocks, fired from Earth, could possibly last long enough in space for them to research other places and planets within our solar system. Meaning there is the possibility that we may be sending life to other planets unintentionally. The study has been submitted for publication in the journal Icarus and presents a new perspective on the panspermia hypothesis. The panspermia hypothesis suggests that there is life out there in the universe and that life is moved or distributed through space via meteoroids, asteroids, comets, planetoids and similar astronomical phenomena. This is purely a theoretical concept as we do not have a way to test it. However, some are suggesting that Earth is indeed playing a role in this. Scientists such as Mauricio Reyes Ruiz from the National Autonomous University of Mexico used computer modeling to demonstrate the impact of an asteroid or comet hitting Earth. The idea is that, with enough velocity, there would be so much debris released upon the impact that it would be kicked up into space. The research team found that, dependent upon the velocity and whereabouts on the planet it hit, the debris could reach to the orbits of the Moon, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and possibly even further. Their computer model only considered 30,000 years, as this means that any radiation damage could be taken into consideration, though this still means there could be a large amount of matter from Earth containing live bacteria in space. Planetary scientist Dr. Simon O'Toole from the Australian Astronomical Observatory said that the advances in computing technology are truly what facilitated this discovery. He said, in the past, we didn't have the processing capacity to carry out these simulations beyond the Moon or Venus. We do not know how long this bacteria could survive in space, but this is an active field of research. Even if they do not survive long, it's baffling to consider microbes from Earth in another planet's orbit. Physicists reveal aliens might use black holes as quantum computers. The Fermi paradox is the belief that if extraterrestrial beings really exist somewhere in the universe, there would be far more conclusive evidence that we currently have pointing to their presence. This particular paradox has plagued astronomers, cosmologists, researchers and alien enthusiasts alike as they continue their search for any indication of advanced life in the universe. Many hold out hope that the lack of evidence does not necessitate the conclusion of its non-existence. 
Some alternative ideas and potential resolutions to this paradox also claim that there are many reasons why such evidence may be hard to find. Either the living organisms do not operate on a massive scale as may be necessary for there to be evidence of life left behind, or that there simply is not enough material used to result in evidence that could be detected. Another prevalent notion is that because the universe is so massive, there is a good chance that advanced civilizations and groups of extraterrestrial beings may simply be too engaged and involved in their own activities, or limited to specific regions, which makes them even less likely to be found. Just because we have not yet found evidence of aliens does not mean we can say with complete certainty that they absolutely do not exist. Now, an even more recent study is giving researchers another idea of why we might not be finding hard proof of aliens. The possibility that these extraterrestrial beings could be using black holes as some sort of quantum computer. What this means in terms of the search for life is that potential civilizations in the rest of the universe may be, on purpose or inadvertently, concealing their existence using highly advanced technology not entirely accessible to us on Earth. Quantum computing is much faster, better, and a huge improvement upon the technology we use in our everyday lives as digital computing. Quantum computing is also immune to decryption, meaning that its biggest strength lies in keeping information hidden and concealed. And because researchers have been seeking proof by means of radio messages, directed energy such as lasers or gravitational waves among many others, the lack of evidence could be a direct result of the way black holes are potentially being used as quantum computers. This new theory is exciting because it poses a possible solution to the Fermi paradox, as well as potentially directing the efforts of researchers towards potentially better means of finding evidence of life in the universe. Asteroid Yugu made up of organic molecules that are building blocks of life There is a prominent theory in the field of astronomy which maintains that all basic building blocks of life did not originally come from the Earth itself. In fact, it's argued that these organic molecules were delivered to the planet from outside to eventually land on its surface during its infancy. The organic molecules that make up the basic foundations for all life on Earth are a vast array of compounds containing a combination of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and other atoms. Such compounds are created by chemical reactions that do not need or use living organisms, but rather are the main underpinnings of all life. And now, evidence of these organic molecules or building blocks have been found within substances that come from outer space asteroids. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency spacecraft Hayabusa 2 was able to obtain samples from the asteroid Yugu and return those samples to Earth, where they were studied and broken down to their basics. This is an enormous undertaking and has moved researchers one step further to the confirmation that the theory about how life really came to exist on Earth may actually hold more truth than was originally believed. The sample contains several types of amino acids that are used by living organisms in order to build proteins essential to regulating chemical reactions and forming structures like hair or muscle. Even more incredible was the finding of organic prebiotic molecules that are usually formed in the presence of water. Aliphatic amines, carboxylic acid, polycylic aromatic hydrocarbons and nitrogen-containing heterosylic compounds. The results of these studies are showing that the asteroid has similar compositions to meteorites in space, meteorites that have been known to have a higher exposure to water. Further information would clarify just how far this evidence goes, and what is lacking from these samples is a good indication of what researchers should keep looking for. Specifically, some of the resources that have been found in other carbon-rich asteroids are missing from these Yugu samples, sugars, and components of DNA and RNA. The research team suspects that the asteroid is not lacking, but rather that further studies deeper into the asteroid are necessary to locate these molecules. James Webb Telescope Finds Distant Galaxies That Shouldn't Exist The James Webb Space Telescope has by now been in space for over a year in its current mission. It has provided immense important information thus far, and now the telescope has discovered galaxies that simply should not exist. That is because these galaxies are too big, 
the stars within them too old, and these two details have shaken all previous notions of how the universe looked and operated in its earliest existence. What's more, these findings do not match earlier observations made by the telescope's predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. Two key elements of what the universe looked like in its youth have been compromised. First, the prior conclusion that the galaxies then were small and young, and second, that as a result of their size and age, their stars would burn blue. Now this seems to not be the case. When researchers received images from the James Webb Space Telescope, the last thing they expected to see were the big red galaxies with masses equaling that of the Milky Way. This is astounding because due to the way time and space works in the universe, these images of the galaxies should theoretically be far, far younger than ours. It's necessary to get further confirmation of what has been detected by the telescope and what the images are showing us. Just because it seems that these large red spots are older, larger galaxies doesn't necessarily mean they are. The truth of the matter is that because there are so many factors at play, particularly when acquiring data from so far away, both in distance and time, there are a lot of variables, such as the possibility that certain stars in the early universe might simply emit light in a way that is different to what we originally thought. What might seem like a galaxy could be a star shining in an unusual, never-before-seen manner. This is the complicated yet exciting thing about space, and we are constantly learning and evolving. Astronomers see moons forming in disks around distant exoplanets. One question that has played on the minds of astronomers for decades with no real answer is how planets and their moons are formed. But thanks to new research, we could be one step closer to answering that very question. Within our solar system, we can see a broad range of moons, from the icy moons like Jupiter's Io to the volcanic surfaces seen on Neptune's Tristan. Whilst we have recorded and observed plenty of moons that orbit the planets in our solar system, 219 to be precise, we are yet to observe any moons beyond Pluto. Planets outside of our solar system are known as exoplanets, and moons, by definition, orbit a planet. Therefore, it is safe to assume that there are a fair number of moons orbiting these exoplanets too. Despite having found more than 4,000 exoplanets, scientists are yet to definitively see an exomoon. There are six potential candidates under surveillance that could be orbiting exoplanets, but we are awaiting confirmation. A particular duo of exoplanets, not unlike Jupiter, have been observed for years. They sit nearly 400 light-years away from Earth and may have recently given us the next step in detecting an exomoon and seeing how moons are formed. Astronomers have observed what is being described as a disk of debris orbiting one of these exoplanets. This is a circle of rocks and gas that is slowly and gradually forming together from its own gravity. Could we have observed a moon in the process of its creation? Many astronomical discoveries are made by noticing a small flicker or slight variation in data sets that tell us to probe further. This phenomenon, however, was captured clear as day in a photograph. This photograph has sparked plenty of excitement and discussion among scientists. An astronomer working at Stanford University, Bruce McIntosh, although not involved with the research, commented, I don't have coherent scientific thoughts. I just look at the image and say, wow, every time I see it. The discovery was first reported in the Astrophysical Journal Letters on July the 22nd and has reignited discussions into how moons are formed. Theories have spread within scientific communities, suggesting that high-force impacts may aid the formation, or magnetic whirlpools that disrupt the gravitational pull could be behind the creation of moons. Miriam Benesty, the lead author of the study and astronomer from the University of Grenoble, says, We have all these theories that are beautiful, but if you cannot test them, they could be completely wrong. This concept of a theory lacking falsifiability or being unable to be proved presents an issue to numerous branches of science, most famously psychology and astronomy, where things can be a little harder to experiment. However, the star system in which this disk of debris has been spotted could present a good opportunity to criticize, rule out and find support for all of these theories. This system is very young in comparison to our own solar system, with the exoplanets, PDS-70b, 
and PDS-70C still having their own disk of gas and dust encircling them, indicating they were only recently formed. It was in 2019, a month after the discovery of PDS-70C, that the dust suggesting an exomoon could be forming was spotted via Chile's Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA. Despite having been the first sign of activity, the signal was incredibly faint, though follow-up observations by Dr. Benesti's team revealed the disk of debris that could be the start of an exomoon forming. It is hoped that within a short amount of time, these methods and patterns of discoveries can become routine and run-of-the-mill. There are a number of telescopes and space observatories with high-tech equipment and that are very powerful that will be open and available for use over the next few years. Hopefully, we will be able to report exomoons themselves being caught on camera, full-formed and entirely confirmed. The discovery of moons in the making is arguably more exciting than stumbling across fully-formed moons. Hopefully, soon enough, we will be able to observe the final product of the exomoons. Astronauts could get oxygen from moon rocks. Space exploration has surprised us with the level of rewards we continue to receive. According to a team of scientists at China's Nanjing University, compounds found in lunar soil may have the capability to produce oxygen and fuel to support moon missions. The team studied moon samples from China's Chang'e 5 spacecraft and discovered iron-rich and titanium-rich compounds that might be able to act as a catalyst in a process called the extraterrestrial photosynthesis strategy. This strategy uses lunar soil to transform water from the moon into hydrogen and oxygen. When astronauts exhale in space, they are producing carbon dioxide that could be used with the hydrogen from water electrolysis to produce hydrocarbons such as methane. The methane could be used as fuel for continued space travel. The paper that produced these findings is part of research scientists have been doing into how resources found on the moon can be used to further space exploration. Space travel is a costly endeavor, and the team is trying to find cost-reducing local resources to make space exploration more possible. Multiple space organizations across several countries are getting in on the action. Along with China's plans to test technology that uses local resources, NASA is also planning to create a long-term plan for a sustainable presence on the moon with the Artemis program. The Artemis program aims to put people back on the moon by the mid-2020s and set up a research station in the south pole of the moon by the late 2020s. Chang'e has been a massive success as it was able to bring back the lunar samples that the team used to make this discovery. Incredibly, it was the first time in almost 50 years that a successful moon sample return occurred, the last time being the Soviet Lunar 24 mission in 1976. Scientists will undoubtedly use this success to discover more secrets of the universe. In the past few years, there have been some incredible space discoveries that have captured our attention. From technological advancements to new planets, the universe continues to surprise us with its endless possibilities. This mysterious photograph was just shared by Apes 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 on Reddit. It was taken at the London Thames by the Naval College at 6 in the evening on the 27th of July. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that something strange has been spotted moving around in the Thames. The River Thames, a historic waterway flowing through the heart of London, has been a subject of fascination and intrigue for centuries. Among the countless stories and tales associated with it, one of the most enduring is that of the River Thames monster, often referred to as the Thames Serpent. The story of the River Thames monster dates back to the 19th century, with accounts of an unidentified creature residing in the murky waters of the Thames. These narratives often depict a serpentine creature, usually large in size, with a long slender body akin to an elongated eel or snake. The first recorded sighting was in 1873, when a man named William Cottery claimed to have seen an enormous creature near the Isle of Dogs. The description was vivid, a creature with a rounded head, large eyes, and an elongated body that rose two meters above the water. Over the years, several other sightings have contributed to the monster's legend. In 2016, 
A video surfaced online showing a large, dark object moving through the water near the O2 arena. The video, which quickly garnered millions of views, sparked renewed interest and speculation about the creature's existence. Yet, what could explain these sightings? One theory proposes that the creature might be a large species of eel. The European conga eel, for instance, can grow up to three meters long and is native to the Thames. Misidentification, especially of unusually large specimens, could potentially explain some of these sightings. Other suggestions have included an out-of-place marine mammal, such as a seal or dolphin, which have been known to occasionally visit the Thames. Their movements and behavior, when observed partially submerged or from a distance, might be mistaken for something more exotic or monstrous. Yet another hypothesis suggests that the sightings might be of large, non-native species inadvertently introduced into the Thames. This could range from released pets, like large snakes or monitor lizards, to marine species transported via ship ballast water. However, skepticism abounds in scientific circles about the Thames monster's existence. The lack of clear, irrefutable evidence, such as high-quality photographs, physical traces, or captured specimens, makes it hard to confirm the creature's identity definitively. Furthermore, the River Thames is one of the most studied and monitored waterways in the world, making it unlikely that a large, undiscovered species could remain hidden. Moreover, it's crucial to consider the role of psychology and social factors in monster sightings. Often people see what they expect or want to see, a phenomenon known as pareidolia. In the case of the River Thames monster, it's possible that ambiguous sightings get interpreted as more monstrous due to the existing folklore. Lastly, let's not underestimate the influence of the media and societal fascination with the unknown. Cryptids, creatures whose existence is disputed or unsubstantiated, hold a particular allure in popular culture. This fascination often results in heightened interest, media coverage, and consequently, more reported sightings. As of right now, while the River Thames monster captures the imagination, the evidence supporting its existence is scant and largely anecdotal. Whether it's a misidentified known animal, an out-of-place creature, or merely a figment of collective imagination, the tale of the Thames monster continues to add a touch of mystery to London's iconic river. For centuries, sailors across various cultures have told riveting tales of sea serpents, monstrous creatures reputed to dwell in the deep, unexplored expanses of the world's oceans. These narratives have been an integral part of maritime folklore, often contributing to sailors' wariness of uncharted territories. The description of sea serpents varies across cultures and eras, but typically portrays them as enormous, snake-like beasts with terrifying features. Some accounts describe them as having horse-like heads, manes, and large, menacing eyes. Others report multiple humps, vast coiling bodies, or even the presence of wings. Such tales have pervaded seafaring cultures for millennia. Ancient Greeks told tales of the Hydra and the Scylla, multi-headed sea monsters that terrorized sailors. Similarly, Norse mythology presents the Jormungandr, or the Midgard Serpent, an enormous sea creature that encircles the world. However, historical accounts aren't merely restricted to mythology. As early as the 4th century BC, the Greek explorer Pythias described seeing a sea monster during his voyage near modern-day Norway. By the 19th century, sea serpent sightings had become a widespread phenomenon, particularly in North Atlantic waters. Numerous ship logs, newspaper reports, and personal journals of this era document these encounters, often in considerable detail. The Gloucester Sea Serpent, sighted repeatedly off the coast of Massachusetts in the early 19th century, was one such example, sparking considerable debate and intrigue. However, in spite of these abundant accounts, no tangible evidence of Sea Serpent's existence has ever been found. This lack of scientific proof has led researchers to propose various explanations for these sightings. Some theorize that many sightings could be cases of mistaken identity. Known marine animals like giant oarfish, sharks, or even whales might have been perceived as sea serpents. Psychology also plays a substantial role in these encounters. Furthermore, the psychological stress of long sea voyages, coupled with fear of the unknown, might contribute to such misinterpretations. Finally, the cultural context cannot be ignored. 
In many societies, maritime folklore serves as a warning system, cautioning sailors against venturing into dangerous, unexplored waters. Sea serpents often symbolize these unknown risks, serving as metaphoric embodiments of the sea's dangers. During the 19th century, newspapers frequently sensationalized sea serpent stories to boost sales. Even today, the allure of sea monster stories continues to captivate public interest, often leading to exaggerated or fabricated reports. The 19th century was a period of global exploration and scientific discovery, but it was also a time where the line between myth and reality was frequently blurred. One of the most captivating instances of this era was the HMS Daedalus's sea serpent sighting in 1848. It is remembered not only for the widespread interest it triggered, but also for the rigorous debate it sparked in the scientific community. On August 6, 1848, HMS Daedalus, a British Royal Navy ship, was en route from the Cape of Good Hope to St. Helena in the South Atlantic, when Captain Peter McKay and his crew reported an encounter with a giant sea serpent. The creature, according to McKay, was approximately 60 feet in length, with a further 30 feet of its body seen coiling beneath the water's surface. He described the creature as having no fins, a dark brown color with a yellowish-white underbelly, and a snake-like head held four feet above the water. McQuay's detailed report, published in the Times of London, garnered immediate attention. The story was soon picked up by other newspapers and periodicals, igniting a flurry of interest, debate and speculation across the country. Some readers were intrigued, some were skeptical, and others dismissed it as pure fantasy. The scientific community was similarly divided. Some naturalists supported McQuay's account, citing it as evidence of large, unknown marine creatures yet to be discovered. Others, however, were skeptical. Sir Richard Owen, a prominent British biologist and a leading critic, suggested that the creature was nothing more than an elephant seal, or possibly a piece of floating seaweed misinterpreted by the ship's crew. The controversy escalated when McQuay published a rebuttal defending his account. He emphasized the excellent visibility on the day of the sighting and the proximity of the creature, which, according to him, was close enough to rule out misidentification. Moreover, he asserted that he and his men were experienced sailors, implying their credibility and capability in distinguishing unfamiliar creatures from known marine animals. This man claims that he caught a glitch in the Matrix. The video starts with the Pope ending his speech at the Vatican. However, as he's turning around, he suddenly vanishes, which causes the screen to swap to another camera. The man who originally found this footage said that it's hard to see, and it's not until you view it frame by frame that you notice that he suddenly vanishes. Oddly enough, this isn't the first time that something like this has happened, and although some have said that it's likely a camera glitch, it's caused others to suggest that this could have been a hologram. In the digital age, the term glitch has become synonymous with technical malfunctions and errors. However, the phrase a glitch in the matrix transcends its digital connotation, entering the realm of popular culture and philosophical musings. Coined from the 1999 film The Matrix, this expression has evolved to signify peculiar and unexplainable anomalies in reality that challenge our understanding of existence. In the science fiction film The Matrix, the term glitch in the matrix is used to describe unexplained anomalies or disturbances in the simulated reality inhabited by humans. Within the context of the movie's plot, humanity lives in a computer-generated virtual world, the matrix, while their physical bodies remain enslaved in a dystopian reality controlled by artificial intelligence. A glitch refers to an abnormality or inconsistency in the simulated reality, suggesting that something is not as it should be. Beyond its cinematic origins, 
the expression has transcended the boundaries of fiction to describe real-life experiences that appear surreal or inexplicable. In contemporary discourse, people use the term to refer to strange coincidences and other seemingly improbable occurrences that evoke the sense of living in a simulated or glitched reality. The phrase, a glitch in the matrix, has profound existential and philosophical implications. It prompts individuals to question the nature of reality and the limits of human perception. The idea that reality might be an elaborate simulation challenges traditional notions of existence and raises age-old philosophical questions about the nature of consciousness and the external world. If reality is merely a simulation, then what constitutes true existence? How do we discern between reality and illusion? These profound inquiries challenge the very foundation of our understanding of the self and the universe. Quantum mechanics, the branch of physics that governs the behavior of subatomic particles, introduces the idea of uncertainty and probabilistic nature at the fundamental level of reality. Quantum mechanics suggests that particles exist in a superposition of states until observed, raising the question of whether reality is inherently indeterminate until perceived. The idea of a glitch in the matrix draws parallels with the uncertainty principle, which posits that we cannot precisely measure both the position and momentum of a particle simultaneously. The very act of observation affects the outcome, blurring the lines between reality and observer. The phenomenon of déjà vu, often associated with a glitch in the matrix, further challenges our understanding of reality and consciousness. Déjà vu occurs when an individual feels a strong sense of familiarity with a situation they believe to be encountering for the first time. While scientists offer neurological explanations for this phenomenon, the experience raises questions about the nature of time, memory, and the continuity of consciousness. Additionally, optical illusions and perceptual distortions demonstrate how easily our brains can be tricked into perceiving something that is not there. These glitches in perception remind us of the limitations of our senses, and the subjective nature of reality. This idea has gained traction in recent years, with prominent figures like Elon Musk suggesting the likelihood of humanity living in a simulation created by advanced civilizations. While the simulated reality hypothesis remains speculative and lacks empirical evidence, it fuels discussions about the nature of reality, the existence of higher beings or entities, and the possibility of parallel universes. The idea that our world might be a simulation, akin to a complex computer program, has gained traction in modern philosophical and scientific discourse. Propelled by advances in technology and theoretical inquiries, this provocative hypothesis posits that we might be living in a simulated reality created by advanced beings or entities. The notion that reality might be a simulated construct is not a new concept. It echoes ancient philosophical inquiries about the nature of existence and the external world. For example, Plato's allegory of the cave describes individuals confined in a cave, perceiving only shadows on the wall cast by objects outside. These shadows represent their reality, analogous to a simulated environment where one's perception shapes their experience of reality. Advancements in technology have propelled the notion of living in a simulated reality into the forefront of modern discussions. Philosopher Nick Bostrom's simulation argument is a seminal work that has stimulated much debate on this topic. Bostrom's argument postulates that one of the following three scenarios is likely. Advanced civilizations do not have the capability or desire to create simulated realities. Advanced civilizations have the capacity to create simulated realities, but choose not to do so. We are living in a simulated reality created by an advanced civilization. Bostrom suggests that the third scenario, where we are living in a simulation, is the most probable. His reasoning stems from the idea that technologically advanced civilizations are likely to develop the capability to create vast simulations, and if even a fraction of these civilizations choose to do so, there would be an overwhelming number of simulated worlds compared to the one real world. The simulation hypothesis raises profound questions about the nature of consciousness and reality. If our world is a simulation, what constitutes consciousness within the simulated entities? Are these simulated beings sentient and self-aware in the same way as their creators? Additionally, the concept of a simulated world 
challenges our perception of reality and the distinction between the real and the simulated. If the experiences within a simulation are indistinguishable from those of the real world, then the notion of authenticity becomes blurred. As such, the very distinction between real and simulated reality loses its significance. Critics argue that the simulation hypothesis faces challenges related to the vastness of the observable universe. The universe, as observed by astronomers and cosmologists, appears to be boundless and evolving in complexity. Creating a simulated reality that accurately models the entire observable universe would require computational power beyond the reach of current technology. However, proponents of the hypothesis contend that the simulated reality need not encompass the entire observable universe. Instead, the simulation could be localized to a specific region, such as our solar system, or even just our planet, while the rest of the cosmos remains beyond the simulation's scope. This approach could reconcile the vastness of the observable universe with the plausibility of simulation. So, what do you make of this mysterious video? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.